It is 5.05 p.m. August 17th, and we are in Finance Committee. Madam Chair, Madam Clerk, I'm sorry. Roll call, please. Mr. Mays. Present. Mr. Murphy. Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Present. Ms. Herkenroder. Present. Ms. Worthing. Present. Thank you. I'm sorry. Ms. Burns, I'm sorry, I apologize to you, Ms. Burns. Present. We have six present. Uh, reading of disorderly persons, city code subsection, section 31-10, disorderly conduct, assault and battery, and disorderly persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Violators will be removed from meetings. We are on to public speaking. If there are any public speakers, please step to the podium and announce your name, please. Hello, my name is R. Earl Mitchell. I live at 759 East Linden Avenue. And today, for the record, I want to state that uh, Consumer Powers came by my house last night and left a note on my door and let me know they had come in the house to change my water meter without my permission. And I come downtown today to check on it. And they say, you gotta, if you don't pay the bill, you go, we're going to cut you off by the meter. But I happened to go by the former mayor office, Mayor Weaver, and I was told that the meeting was tonight. And they told me I better apologize for you coming and do any dealings with her, because I voted for President Mays for the, anyway, Anyway, uh, Mayor Weaver, if you hear me, uh, oh, but you got to deal with Bonehead downstairs. You ain't got the president back to your seats yet. I mean, Mayor, oh, anyway, and I, and I found out that we have it. Uh, they were told the meeting was Monday, next Monday. But I was, see on this special, uh, me, the president called a special meeting tonight because as a senior citizen, my birthday is August 15th, that we got some funds for six hundred and we going they gonna pay for our anything necessary, any means possible. The senior citizen and all the people of Flint who getting these people's breaking in your house without your permission, and I got to deal with the landlord. I can't. They told me they'd call the landlord and tell them what happened, cause the water is real low. I feel like that. Well, anyway, that was for the record. For we the peoples, as a warrior, water. I want. I feel all right now that I see it on the thing. Mays call a special to deal with you people, especially that Miss Worsom over there, and I mean, the school teacher. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Next speaker. Hi, how are you doing? We will respond, I'm doing well and thank you. We will respond at the end. So okay. Just, so we're not being impolite. So um, you can state your name and then the podium, the mic is yours. <clears throat> Well, I'm J.V. Miller. I was a former Flint police officer, and I'm here to speak on behalf of myself and about my job at the city. Um, the charges were dismissed as it's all been over the news and paraded, and no one asked my story or asked, you know, what happened to me. Um, hold, I, on, hold on just a second. Okay. And Janelle, can we start as thank you. And hold on, let her, when she sits down, tell when it's okay, when we're ready. Wanna make sure you. Um, pretty much. It's working too well now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm a um, Flint Community School student, uh, born and raised in the city of Flint. And the only thing I really wanted to do was work for the city of Flint Police Department. I had, um, Officer Latia Hewley and the Carter Mavery as uh, liaisons in high school. And for to be cast away 
with these erroneous allegations that were brought up against me was very wrong. So you know, that's it. You're, is that all you want to tell us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Miller. All right. Next public speaker, please. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I reside in the city of Flint. And I'm here very uh, specifically, and I remember this young man's plight. And I remember how wrong he was. A lot of people you all may not remember it or may not know about it, but this young man was wrong. When I'm here about the fire, uh, what, the fire at uh, 637 uh, West uh, Pulaski Street, and I think everybody, Mr. Pfeiffer, I got one for you also, uh, that the report from Michigan State Police came out and I also have the tapes. And it's a, it's a sad shame that two white firefighters did not do their jobs and because they didn't, and this is not from AC, this is from the, the, the uh, Michigan State, and you can read it, I highlighted some parts in there and subsequently, two young black boys die because two white seasoned firefighters refused to go in the house and check the house out for human lives. And when you read the report, it's just terrible. And when you, if you get the uh, fire chief's report, and some of you looked at it on M Live, he literally indicted those two firefighters and requested that they be fired. And you don't take it from me; just read the reports. And I think it's sad. I think that uh, this city council ought to uh, ask the police chief to file charges. I'm finished already? No, no, I'm sorry. Okay, to file charges on those uh, two white firefighters. When you have young men like this who wrongfully uh, accused and Mayor Neely fired him, but yet you have two white firefighters, two black babies die as a result of them not doing their job. And the one... You can, you, can, you can continue to wrap up. Well, I don't want to make nobody mad, but the one uh, firefighter that saved him was a son of Deputy Chief uh, Kerry Edwards. Her son saved him, them boys. Subsequently, they died a couple of days later. But this needs to be investigated and not swept over. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dumas. Next speaker. Next speaker. Are there any more public speakers? That ends our public speaking. We will now go on to council response. Are there any council members who would like to respond to the public speakers? Any council members would like to respond to the public speakers? <laughs> Councilman Murphy, you have yes. the Thank you. floor, sir. Thank you guys for um, speaking. Um, RL, that um, letter that you're talking about for your shut off, I would like to get a copy of that. If you can have the clerk or someone give me a copy of your shut off so I can see what it is and see what I can do to try to help you resolve that situation if I can be of assistance to you. Um, for the young man um, that got let go, if you could put something in writing that we can actually see what the, because when you were speaking, we really, I personally didn't know where you was going. So I don't know about the situation or whatever situation you have, but if you could put it in writing and um, give it to us, that would give us a little bit more to go on. For um, A.C. Dumas, on the situation on Pulaski, it is disheartening whatever happened. And on Pulaski Street, I, I don't believe that we are at liberty to um, discuss that here because, for one, whoever um, is part of the discipline, whether they are um, fired or whatever, they have a union that represents them. It's a protocol that they have to go through 
far as that getting fired and let go. Um, we don't have the power as a council to just um, have someone fire. But I would um, like to put a referral in to the attorney to um, see if we can get something to update us and go into executive session to talk about what happened on um, Pulaski Street. I just don't think this is the right platform to talk about anything dealing with that situation because it could still be up under um, investigation and for us to go and speak on something <clears throat> is two sides to every story. And I also, um, you know, I'm aware that this is the political season and I would hate to use the situation that happened on Pulaski as a platform to come before council and use it as a political thing to say either Sheldon Neely or whoever is at fault. We just need to do some um, investigation. It's very disheartening what happened, but I just don't think this is the platform for us to talk about that. Anyone else would like to respond to the public speakers? Yeah, Councilman Madam Mays. Chair. You have the floor, sir. Yeah, Madam Chair, I respectfully disagree with my colleague about the political season. It was a political season when this council, in my opinion, wrongfully removed me from president in the middle of an election. This council is political, the city is political, and it ain't no way around it. So I respectfully disagree with that statement. Let me say this. I have no problem looking into the goings-ons of the city, any other affairs of the city. That's my job. When it comes to what happened on Pulaski Street, that concerns me. You had live people in the house. Politics was involved in that, I hear, as it relates to discipline, decisions the chief made, the mayor getting involved in it, that's a problem. The mayor has been sticking his nose into a bunch of stuff. Whittigan, complaints, gone to HR, I'll get into that. So it's highly political and I wanna put a stop to it. Mr. Miller, I see the chief back there. I spoke, asked the chief to speak to you. I'm familiar with the allegations and the complaint that was made that was dismissed by some lady. I've had false complaints made on me. You were in six months of a year probationary period and we're looking for good police officers, local folks. So I'm familiar with people making false police reports on folk. It's beyond our control. It's beyond my control, and we need to put a stop to it. We need to live in a city where when folks make false complaints, they are prosecuted. It's against the law. I wouldn't care where they sit at. They could sit in the finance department. They could sit outside somewhere on the street. I'll wrap up, um, Madam Chair. But I'm very interested in this, and I won't let it lay. But if my colleagues decide to let it lay for whatever reason, that's on them. It won't be on me because I've experienced the wretched dirtness of false complaints. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Any other council members would like to respond? Any other council members would like to respond to the public speakers? Well, I will respond. Um, I want to say thank you to all of the public speakers for taking the time to come here. Um, RL, we listened to you. It sounds like um, Councilman Murphy had a request. I know you're in his ward to turn your bill in to him. Please make sure that you do that. Um, Mr. Miller, your story isn't complete. I know some of your story, but you do need to put something in writing. I know when people get to that podium, people freeze up. Um, so if you can put something in writing so that we will have uh, uh, understanding. Um, and please leave it for all of the council members so that we'll all be on the same page. Um, Mr. A.C. Dumas, the um, issue in regards to the fire with the two children who tragically lost their lives, it was extremely tragic. Um, when you pull children out of a fire and there were two young boys uh, and people don't get over that. You, you just don't. The parents won't and the firefighters who found them won't. 
they're going to carry that with them for the rest of their lives. Um, the, where we're at in this process, um, I've requested information, and it's been difficult getting information. Um, I got an email today. I'm having to ask information two, three, four times from different departments, and I'm not able to get it. You know, I believe in being transparent, and we're not getting transparency. So when it comes to these children's lives, I, I want to make sure we're careful because of the family. But I believe at this point, it, it has to be discussed so it never happens again. I know the process of when, we're sweep, when you're sweeping, when you have an all clear. I know it. I know it. I know it because my ex-husband was a fire marshal. And so when children are pulled out and the, the grief that this family has, we have to be careful on how we, we, we tread. Information is now coming out, and it should be public um, because this situation, it shouldn't have occurred. My heart goes out to that family, to the mother and to the father. It truly, truly does. Um, and what I will do is, as I get information, I will share, you know, when we are able to share it. Um, and you got information, Mr. Dumas, before I got it. And <laughs> that was disappointing. Um, we're going to go on to um, our next is special order, a special order 220331, special order relief water customers. It's a special order requested by Councilman Eric Mays to discuss relief for water customers. Councilman Mays, you have the floor, sir. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. One of the biggest handicaps I've experienced as I go through this fight to set agendas and put stuff on the agenda, Mr. Miller and Mr. Madam Chair and to the public, when you take away my duties and responsibilities, you can't put stuff on the agenda. That's by design. The stuff with the fire department should be on the agenda. Um, Davion Miller, you makes my agenda and other things. But right now, this is a special order dealing with the water customers. I will try my best to get agenda items on the agenda on these important matters, which you've discussed, Mr. Dumas, Mr. Miller, and others. That's been by design to keep stuff off these agendas. Through you, Madam Chair, to Amanda. As Amanda approach, if you allow. Yes. Um... As Amanda approaches, I would say to this council, it's amazing, excuse the pun, Sam Muma, but it's amazing what I hear folks say. Get ready, um, Mr. Jarzinski. This, if you look at the tapes of this council, they get mad when I say what they say. We need to use this money to leverage more money. The water crisis was man-made. It was intentional the governor, emergency managers. It was avoidable. Now you got a group of council persons and politicians, including Mr. Neely, who wasn't really involved in it. I got residents coming up to me, give us the $300. The state should give you $300. The 8,600 based upon the my colleagues come and saying, we need to use this money to leverage more money. Leverage some water credits or some money from the state with this money before you get rid of $8.6 million. Don't get amnesia now. $16 million. Everybody was happy. Oh, they leveraged money from the Mott Foundation, from the county. We're going to tear down houses. They should have been in the leveraged money and put money there to tear down houses. The state of Michigan and Governor Whitmer, uh, state reps, and everybody else should have already been and put money for water credits. I'm not going to vote to spend a dime because this council, forget Whitmer, forget state reps, we need to leverage money with this money before we spend it. Now, all of a sudden, everybody got amnesia. Everybody got amnesia. I don't have amnesia, Amanda. 
because $8.6 million is a good chunk of money. And at least before it's spent, it should be used in the words of my colleagues, leverage money for these residents as it relates to water, credits, and or bills. I don't see nothing funny about it. I notice all the time when I try to make a point, it's a certain council person, particularly in the seventh ward, who engages and laughs, and it could be my imagination. The Temptations made a song say it's just my imagination, but I think not. I don't think my imagination is running away with me because I've noticed the demeanor of my colleagues. I've noticed their votes, their action, who they talk to, when they talk to them, how they talk. Demeanor is admissible in a court of law. Through you, Madam Chair, to Amanda. Amanda, have you heard anybody talk about um, water credits from the state or any money from the state as it relates to the residents of the city of Flint? No, I haven't. No, you haven't. Well, this is the day to engage. Madam Chair, through you, to the clerk, to our staff, I would like a letter drafted up discussing this 8.6 million sent to State Senator Ananick, Cherry, Neely, Governor Whitmer, as it relates to what's being proposed here. And I want that letter to ask the state to chip in before I vote to spend a dime. This was a state-created, man-made debacle. And some of the new folks on council in this administration seem to forget. I don't have amnesia. I don't have amnesia when it, re it relates to using our money to leverage money to serve these residents. I don't have amnesia when I looked at the credits that the state gave. And I don't have amnesia now as it relates to trying to get politicians to do the right thing on behalf of our residents. Amanda, you said that the shortfall in the water department. You seem like you said it was about 40 something million. 49. 49 million. Yes. Amanda, let me talk to Mr. Drzezinski and I'll get back with you. Okay. Under these goofy rules, I don't think we have enough time to really attack that 49 million. But I'm starting out through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Drzezinski. Can you approach? Mr. Jasinski, you have looked at, I don't know if I want to use the word vetted, but you have looked at some of the requests from residents as it relates to a form that they've requested funds for from city council. Is that correct? That's correct. And some of those forms, if you recall, ask for requests as it relates to water bills and relief. Do you recall? There are a few, yes. There are a few. And does those requests for funds qualify based on what you know as it relates to um, those water bill requests, or do they not qualify? Do you know? Well, the, the qualification of using monies for water credits is an eligible expenditure. I didn't ask road. about water credits. Um, are you saying that the request forms, if a person requested um, 3,000, they could be given 3,000 in water credits? 
because I just asked about the funds for water relief, but you specifically referred if, to water credit, city, so I'm going to ask that specific question. If the city determined that that was an appropriate or an approved expenditure of the funds, yes, it would be now, I want to know what you interpret as uh, eligible expenditure. That's what we're paying you to do. If we could do it on our own, we wouldn't have to pay Ernst and Young. No, I'm, I'm saying that, yes, it would be an eligible expenditure. If Beg city, your pardon? It would be an eligible expenditure if the city determined that was the use of the funds they wanted to, to undertake. So it's an eligible expenditure to um, take care of residents in the area of water, bills, and relief. That would go under direct housing assistance, yes. Beg your pardon? That would be under direct housing assistance, yes. Direct housing assistance. It could be done. Mr. Jarzinski, when you look at those request forms, and I'm going to use the word vet them, see what qualifies, who do you turn the results into? Council has received the results for the first 20 that we reviewed over the last 12 or 13 days. I think we've received another 150 that we are currently processing. So let me ask this question. When you say council received it, you vet them and you turn the results into who, Ms. Brown or to the council staff or to Ms. Um, Burns, who? I submitted the Excel spreadsheet to Rob Whittigan, who forwarded it to all of you, I believe. Okay, I'm not interested in them going to Rob Whittigan. I'm interested, I'm interested in the results coming firsthand to the council. Do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with that, but they were forwarded directly to you from Rob. Okay, I don't want them forwarded directly to Rob Whittigan. I'm requesting, I'm asking that they be forwarded. You can forward them to Whittigan if you want, but I want your work to come back to the council. Okay. I appreciate that. The hundred and something, you're betting them now? Yeah, we received, I want to say last Tuesday, around 80 of them. Seems about, I mean, I don't have the exact numbers, and we received another batch on Friday, and then we received some yesterday or Monday. Now, through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Brown. Ms. Brown, is it a problem receiving the work through the council office from Mr. Jarzinski? So, so far, to my knowledge, we've not received the, uh, the, Excel, the Excel spreadsheet that he mentioned, unless it came today or something. No, yeah, Mr. Jarzinski. This was a couple ahead. weeks. This was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. See, Mr. Jarzinski, what I'm concerned about, I forget how it came to me. It might have came to me through Ms. Burns or through Ms. Jerry Winfrey Carter, but it was some email with some results from Mr. Whittigan. I don't know what you turned into him, but I want to cut through that chase. I want your work. You work for the city. We hired you, we voted, and we have a request form. I want your work to come directly back to this council. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy to do no that. No problem. Thank you so much. And so when they come, what can we expect? Um, because what I'm hearing now from third hand is some type of summary. Are you actually saying um, this request qualifies in certain categories and this one don't? Um, are you actually giving us a yes or no answer? We'll tell you what, what we have on there is if it's, an, if it's an eligible expenditure category under the ARPA guidelines, so it would qualify under just general treasury terms as well. We've uh, done an analysis against the original overall ARPA plan that has been submitted to council by the city administration and whether or not there is a um, category that they have assigned to it. So whether or not, first, whether it's eligible or not, and second, whether or not it's in the overall plan, meaning it would map to that priority that's been identified through the city's plan. 
The overall plan and the breakdown of monies, in my opinion, haven't been decided yet. I'm familiar with a category and a amount of money that um, the mayor and his administration submitted. I'm familiar with that. But I'm not convinced that's going to be the drop dead plan and the amount of categories. So what I would like for you to do is if you look at them and they qualify, let us know. Now, if the administration comes up with some type of request form or an application, let me ask you this important question. The council, certain council members, even though they voted on this request form, they've been on the news disavowing it, so to speak. It's the craziest thing I ever seen in my life, but it's, it's factual. And the administration has been right with some of these council folks on the news, one in particular, disavowing this process and form. Once you get these 20, now it's like 80, 120. If this administration comes up with an application or another request form, who would you suggest send a letter out to the ones we've already vetted, the council or you? And when I say send a letter out, because I'm going to hook the process together. These people, well, let me do it this way. It's been people from the administration stand up here and say more information is needed on those request forms. You've looked at 20 of them. What additional information is needed? Well, an example that I would provide is uh, not knowing the exact name on the, the form is not relevant. But I can't we, we've understand had, you. I can't we've hear. had requests for repairs to houses, such as a roof, sidewalk, cabinets, uh, siding, and so forth. It says $20,000 is needed. There's no detailed budget with it. There's no quotes to understand if the dollars that are being requested are truly $20,000, those types of things are not in those forms. So when you look on the surface of that request and you see a qualifying home on expenditure and you see $20,000, then we might have to send a letter out, um, either you, your firm, and or counsel saying, can you give us a little more detail? That would maybe correct that? Yes, that would correct it. Okay. Um, and did you make those notes on each of those individual requests of what needed to be done additionally? Yeah, we, we, we state in there what details are not included. Okay, Ms. Brown, through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Brown. Ms. Brown, do you have those um, vetted requests? If, if I could, Mr. Mays. Okay, I would, and I, I need to, for you to really okay. speak up. I'm trying to really get okay. a handle on this. I would like to apologize to to him as well as Mr. Whittigan. The day after the election, we did receive the communication from Mr. Whittigan's office, and it was, it did go to all the council members, including yourself. Yeah, and I wanna see if we're getting the full story. I don't want nothing lost in the translation from his office to Whittigan's office to us. That's why I'm going over specifically now if he looked at a request for him, for example, for 20000 as he just described, do he put on there the additional information that's needed? And, and you said the answer is yes. So I could look at that $20,000, for example, and I could then send a letter out from my office to that particular request person and tell them what additionally they need from looking at what you wrote. Yes, assuming that council and the city have agreed that the funds will be used for that, that would be an appropriate exercise. Well, let me say this. You keep saying the council and the city. The council is part of the city, but the council passed a resolution 
that was not vetoed. The resolution reads, and I'm gonna paraphrase, that the opera money will be, des will be allocated by the city council. It won't be allocated by Whittigans. It won't be allocated by Neely. The resolution that was not vetoed passed that five or more votes will allocate these monies in each category. Did you realize that? Yeah, yes, I'm aware that that resolution passed. Yeah, that, and it's a real resolution. It's the real process. So when you keep saying the city referring to Whittigan and Mr. Neely is throwing me off, and I don't want to be threw off. Until that resolution changed, this is the body that will allocate that money. Now, if an application or a request form comes from the administration, from residents, I'm willing to look at it. Through you, Madam Chair, if you may hold on a minute, Mr. Whittigan, I mean, Mr. Jasinski, through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Lottie Ferguson, can you approach? And Mr. Um, Edwards, if you choose, you may approach as well. Mr. Jasinski, I really appreciate your communications and cooperation. Ariel. Yeah, Madam Chair, I want to tighten this thing up because I'm still getting calls and people are still coming into the office filling out these request forms. Um, through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Ferguson, have there been an application made up and developed or anything from the administration to date, to, to, to this day? Yes, we're working on an application. I didn't say what you're working on. Is it developed and ready to this day? That's it, what I'm asking. It is not ready today. Okay, it's still not ready. That's all I want to know. Um, thank you, um, Madam Chair. When do you anticipate it? We've uh, had some discussions with your uh, ad hoc committee, and we're working through some of the uh, Let me say this. I don't know. When, when this body decided to remove me as president, we in court, we might have got an opinion today. They might, according to the judge, be right. They might be wrong. I don't know. But we were in court, I think, yesterday or day before. I appointed that ad hoc committee. And I appointed that ad hoc committee with the intent of communicating with the council. I'm here to say to you, in a very polite, professional way, Talk to the council. Talk to the council. This is the finance committee. That's who the ad hoc committee reports to. It was never intended for two people to have carte blanche communication as it relates to these important matters. Ask the finance chair, Ms. Burns, to be on the agenda. This council is entitled to information should flow, flow, flow freely and timely. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, well, we'll see. I've asked my question. I'll ask this question. What information you didn't gave to that hot committee that you're not giving to us right now? Is there any? I, I don't know that there is anything that uh, would be of importance at this time. No, well, we've, I we've know what was important to me. It was important for me to know if there was an application designed and ready to go. The answer was no. It is no, and the ad hoc committee is aware of that. Beg your pardon? It, it, it is no, and the ad hoc committee is aware that the application is Now the council is aware. Now the public is aware. Is there anything else that the ad hoc committee had no or you talked about that you want to enlighten us on at this time? That's the only thing y'all talked about? We, we've talked about a number of different things, including um, uh, the application process. And as soon as that is available for public, then we will happily share that. 
Do you believe that the request for forms that people are coming to the council office filling out um, is some type of a legitimate process? Have y'all talked about whether it is or not? Uh, I personally think it is a good opportunity for continued public input on uh, how the um, city will eventually spend those funds. You think that that request form people coming to council is a good opportunity? For input, yes. I think it is too. And I'm glad to hear you say that because listening to Whittigan and uh, my colleague in the Ninth Ward all on the news, it created some confusion. Do the members of the ad hoc committee, did they express to you that it was or was not? Do you recall? Can, if you have questions of the ad hoc committee, they're, they're both here. Oh, they sure are, and you are here too. And if you choose not to answer on what you recall, that's your business. But I'm going to show asset and have asked it. And so you referred it to them, and I'll follow up with them. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Edwards, is there anything you'd like to add at this point? Uh, Councilman Mays, um, nothing other than the fact that, you know, we have cooperated and worked with the ad hoc committee, and I believe that committee is very capable of providing you an, and this body an ample report of what has taken place in those meetings. So you've been involved with the two-member ad hoc committee as well as what you're telling this council and this public? No, sir. I just, I trust my team, and I know that, I know that Ms. Ferguson has been and that group have been diligent in working with the council members, so. And that team that you're referring to on this particular issue is headed up by Ms. Ferguson? Correct, correct. Correct? That's well, correct. see, she seems logical and honest to me so far. Um, Mr. Edwards, did you get a chance to go back and look at the tape? Unfortunately, I, I did not, Mr. Well, Williams. some of us did, but anyway, that saved that for another day. Through you, Madam Chair, to who's the chairperson of that ad hoc committee, Ms. Priestley? Ms. Priestley, even though this special order is specific to the water customers to get an overall scheme of things, um, I think Mr. Jerzinski was very helpful as it relates to that matter. And then I'm listening to Ms. Ferguson and what she said. She said she think it was a good process and an opportunity. I don't want to put words in her mouth as it relates to the request form. I asked her, you are one member of the ad hoc committee. I've seen my colleagues and Mr. Whittigan and others on the news down in that process to residents. What's your position on that request form? Do you feel the same as Ms. Ferguson or differently? Mr. Mays, though that form was designed for input from the constituents of the city, the residents of the city. It does not meet the regulations that are needed to do federal dollars. But it is a start. But it is not what I consider an application for funds. I never did. Now, the ad hoc committee and the administration have met twice since the last meeting. There has been no opportunity, no decisions made. There's still some decisions that um, Ms. What Dr. Lewis and I have to meet and discuss to bring forward. And when we have some kind of information that we feel we can share with the, <laughs> with the council, we will at this point. It's just bogging down information that may or may not happen and be our recommendation to this body. Um, Ms. Priestley, I respectfully hear you, but I respectfully disagree with your logic in your communications. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Jarzinski, could you approach? Mr. Jarzinski, Ms. Priestley just alluded to the fact that the request form that you vetted and looked at doesn't meet federal guidelines. Is that your opinion? Well, at, 
And I'm there, paraphrasing. There are no federal guidelines for a form, but I will tell you that Ms. Priestley is correct in stating that they are not applications that could be processed for payment. Let me say this. They, they are there and they are, it's paper people can request money on. You said you vetted them and if it's some additional information, you've made notes what was needed, correct? Correct. Do you need to create the application form or are you gonna continue to wait months and weeks for this administration? So the application form that Ms. Ferguson referred to is responsive to the areas of the ARPA plan that the city has presented that have opportunities for citizens to receive money. That application will have all of the information that's necessary outlined in it, and that's what people will apply to when they want and to And it will need funds. no additional information once they fill it out. You don't know that, do you? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, I'll help you understand. You can create every application you want. And when you look at it, if somebody is missing some information, you, Ms. Ferguson, or somebody will call them in and ask for additional information, correct, on that application or any application. I would think that's a fair thing to do. What do you think? So when the application is released and people can apply to it and we have additional questions, of course, there will be a process to follow up with those individuals. And it's nothing wrong with taking the request form that we have now with people's names and information and hooking it to the application, is it? So those are viewed, at least from our perspective, as to are they eligible expenditures. They're not viewed as applications that would be continuing through the process. Hold up, repeat that again. What, what part? Because you're saying how you view something, and then I'm gonna tell you how I view it. So I, let's compare I how you difference. view it. Hold up, we can dance at the same time, but we can't talk really. You say this is how you view it, the request form that you vetted and looked at. Tell me again how you view it. We view them for expenditure eligibility and their tie-in to the overall ARPA plan, which is what I stated earlier. So you review it as a, when they fill it out, it's gonna tell you initially if they are eligible for some type of expenditure if the expenditure that they're requesting would qualify under one of the treasury guidelines, yes. So that's the value of that request form. Uh, I get, yes. Oh yeah, I know that's valuable. It's valuable to get a heads up from residents on that request form is whether or not they're requesting an eligible expenditure. And that's how you view it. That's how I view it. I view it the same way. It's a legitimate request form that people are coming to fill out. And once they fill it out and you vet it, where we seem to disagree at, it doesn't lose its value. If Miss John, Johnny, if Mr. Johnny Johnson fills out a request form and y'all come up with another application, I want to make sure that Mr. Johnny Johnson is going to be getting one of them applications. And I don't see nothing hard about that. That's a simple thing. So if it's 120 of them, soon as this application, whenever it's ready, all 120 of them through our office or through your office, or through the administration office, it's gonna hook them together with Johnny Johnson, Johnny May Johnson, Pookie, Ray Ray, and everybody else. You see a problem with that? I have no problem with that. It shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem to make sure that people are serviced properly. Now let me ask you, this is an important question. Since February, Valentine's Day, 
Mr. Whittigan stood before this council as recorded and said by the end of the week, he would have a form ready. This is August. Ms. Ferguson then told us today it's not ready. We're paying your firm. What's wrong with you developing an application? Anything wrong with that? Our scope of work isn't to develop the application. That is, Beg your pardon? Our scope of work does not include to develop that application. You've been working on it? Or you have no, not been asked to work not. on it? We are not. Okay, I'm going to ask you to work on it. I'm going to ask you to work on it. Do you accept that polite request to work on an application? Yes, certainly. We, we've seen the drafts of the application and provided comments, but we're not the ones developing the application. Say that again. We have seen drafts of the application as it's been coming through the editing process and have made comments. I don't think if you was working on it, Mr. Jasinski, it would take from February to August. That's just my belief. I still have confidence in your firm. You got a million dollar contract. Last I checked, you had only drew down 160 some thousand dollars, correct? That's right. So if you only drew down 160 some thousand and that leave 800,000 or more in the pot and you're working for the city, which includes the administration and the city council. I can appreciate it if you accept my polite request to work for this city and for this council to develop an application form. Because I'm not satisfied with the amount of time it has taken from February 14th to now. And I'm further not satisfied with what I'm hearing from members of this administration, not all of them, on the news. I'm not comfortable with what I'm hearing from Ms. Worthing on the news, and I'm not comfortable with what I'm hearing from Ms. Priestley in this meeting. Madam Chair, through you to the other member of the ad hoc committee, Ms. Lewis. Ms. Lewis, do you have the same feelings as Ms. Priestley as it relates to the um, rest request form that you amended and voted upon for the residents of the city of Flint? That form was not created to, um, to distribute funds, but I thought that form was exclusively to gather information as we had our public meeting so we can decide on how we were going to allocate the funds. We were not using that form to actually deliver funds to the residents. Let me say this, Ms. Lewis, to you, Ms. Priestley, to the council and to the public. Anybody listening at this conversation rationally and listening to Mr. Jarzinski from Ernst and Young should know by now, and even Ms. Ferguson, that that's a legitimate form to start out a request. They have been vetted, some of them, and if additional information is needed, we have documentation. Nothing in the resolution that the council passed says we have to wait on an application from the administration to start voting to allocate money. Point of order. What's your point of order? Uh, I'm sure Mr. Mays's heart is in the right spot, but this is a, a special order to discuss water credits. That is correct. And, Thank you. And Madam Chair, without knowing where we're going to allocate money and how, for example, there's no way am I going to allocate $8.6 million. Now, Mr. Pfeiffer can. He can allocate $8.6 million before we allocate lost revenue. We're facing a $15 million budget deficit. We've got a category, Mr. Jarzinski, can you approach, of lost revenue. And so I want to make sure 
and listen to this, do you, Madam Chair, Mr. Jasinski, have the lost revenue money been calculated yet? And if so, how much and when was that? When, when is that resolution coming? Do you know? I, I don't know if there'll be a resolution related to lost revenue. The lost revenue is a reporting item that goes to Treasury on an annual basis based on lost revenue based on a base year of 2000, I think, 19. Let me ask you this question. How much lost revenue in that category is the city of Flint showing that if this council, if I wanted to sponsor a resolution to vote on it in two weeks, how much do you see? And Mr. Piper, if I may, Madam Chair, these are the relevant questions for me before I spend 8.6 million in water credits, if you understand. Um, if I sponsored a resolution for lost revenue in two weeks, Mr. Jasinski, before I got ready to spend 8.6 million on water credits, um, what would the amount be to the best of your knowledge at this point? So the, the lost revenue number would, would be around $35 million, I believe, the last number I looked at. $35 million. But, but if I, if I may for a second, sure. that, that's a statistical number that's used for reporting and it, it allows you to spend the funds in buckets that are not in the other parts of the American Rescue Plan Act for provision of government services. Could you repeat that? So those dollar, what, what those dollars do is they allow you to spend the funds in what's traditionally called provision of government services. So. It's different than the other ARPA traditional categories. The water funding um, assistance that's, I think we're talking about, is in a different category in terms of reporting to Treasury. What the revenue loss category allows you to do is spend it in things that would be considered traditional government services, things that, that the city has typically done, correct? And so it's really just, a, it, it gives you more flexibility in terms of how you spend the dollars. I understand. Let me say this, though, Mr. Jasinski. Under the formula of lost revenue, if we stay up under, what is it, 10 million, I call it the short form. Eight to 10 million lost revenue, is, it don't have all the compliance components. When you get up to 35 million, there are some more tedious compliance components. Would that be a fair statement? No, not really. The use of the funds, so the way Treasury views it is every municipality, county, state, everybody is allotted a standard allowance of the $10 million revenue loss. Up to loss. 10 whether million, you, a standard you, allowance. Whether you had it or not. Like, so some, some cities didn't have revenue loss, and so, through the process. The After $10 million, then what happens? Well, the, re the reporting isn't really any different. You still have to report your, your numbers as you were. You just have a larger bucket of funds in that provision so of Mr. services. So, Mr. Jarzinski, whether we agree or disagree, and however we word it, when it hits $10 million, that standard allowance, we must account for the money and lost revenue just like we do in any other category and prove it if necessary, we have to pay it back. Every dollar needs to be Every paid, dollar. Whether you're under 10 million or over 10 million. So let's look at it this way. If we got, what, about 70 some million left and we do 35 million for lost revenue, 35 million subtract from 74 million, for example, might be 39 million. So that means if we gonna do lost revenue and then we go and spend 8.6 million of the remaining 30 some million, we gonna drop down to 20 some million. It would be prudent for me to get that lost revenue category out of the way because contrary to popular point belief, with, with... What's your point of order? This is supposed to be talking about the water and not on 
general ARPA dollars. Um, thank you. What's, what's your point of order? Can we quiet down the audience, please? Um, so, it, we, and there was a little, you may be hearing, you've got a little bit going on with Dylan over there, I know. Then we've got um, our Mr. Mitchell. So if the audience can please remember the acoustics, we cannot hear. Um, it, and it's difficult, I know, on this side for council members to hear. So, so we can please keep it down um, as we are having our meeting. And Councilwoman um, Priestley, on yours, uh, Councilman Mays stated that before he can make a decision, he had these questions needed to be answered before he arrived at his decision to give the $8.6 million or $300 water credit uh, to Flint residents. So, so Madam Chair, proceed. Mr. Jasinski, is it something that you understand or don't that you want to add I, to I that just conversation wanna... about the amount of lost revenue yeah, I just want to clarify and other spending. If, yeah, you have, absolutely. Just want to clarify what this loss this lost revenue number you, you don't claim it as lost revenue and then just have it. What it does is it, it allows you to be more flexible in terms of how you spend the dollars. So you, you, maybe I'm I'm oversimplifying, but you don't you don't just spend that number and ha have it as free funds. You still have to use it for the provision of government services. So you don't, like, like you don't kind of get it out of the way, I guess is what I'm Let saying. Let me ask this question, Mr. Jasinski. Out of the 35 million in lost revenue, if we face a $15 million general fund projected deficit in the next fiscal year, we could definitely use that 35 million to plug up that general fund deficit, correct? Yes, and my understanding is that the plan had a, uh, I want to say, eight and a half million dollars was set for that. Let me say this, um, Mr. Jarzinski, to the public, to you, to my colleagues, even though Miss Wer uh, Miss um, Priestley, who she says she the ad hoc committee has left her seat. Anybody who does the spending of this money, it would seem, even though you can use the 35 million once it goes from the lost revenue category, it will go to the general fund, correct? Again, no, that's, that's, not, how it, that's not how the Treasury allows you to use the funds. What, what we would have to do is set those funds for a specific expenditure. It's, you can't just go into the general fund. Okay, so, if we did 15 million of lost revenue and set it aside to plug up the 15 million dollar projected deficit, that would be one amount of spending of 35 million. Hold on. The, if we said we're going to take um, 5 million and use it for crime prevention, we could do that. You're saying it would be wrong to set. 10 million and just leave it in the general fund for later. You ain't saying that, are you? No, no. What I'm saying is. I didn't think so. Is let's assume you said we're going to put 10 for. Per, like, there's no, there's no capacity to just put it in the general fund, is what I'm saying. But what you can do is assign government service oh, Mr. expenditures. Jersensky, um, in the back, we, we cannot hear. Um, so they having a yeah, meeting. Yeah, we we Priestly cannot, Worthen. Yeah. Um, if who is I don't know who is. Can they go they to their office? Uh, Miss Priestley, Councilwoman Priestley, and Councilwoman Worthing, we're it's we can hear you all the way to the front. We can't. Mr. Jarzinski has a very soft-spoken voice. Yeah, it's just, you know. <laughs> I know. If, I'm, I'm gonna wrap up. Thank I'm you. gonna wrap up, Miss Madam it, Chair. It, but, it, 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 if I could finish my, my sure. So, so what you really do is you assign costs to that $10 million. What, what I'm trying to say is you don't just move it to the general fund. We still have to report on those expenditures. Yeah, if we, if we did an expend of crime prevention and $10 million for the police department and then didn't have to spend that $10 million from the police out the general fund, we still would net. 10 million. Yeah, and, and depending on what the police expenditure is, it 
may qualify under a different bucket, which still protects that revenue loss category. I understand. Even out of the 35 or 38 million, um, I don't know if the water would qualify as a general services expenditure because that's an enterprise fund. That's a separate fund. But my point is this, and we'll get there. My point is this, you're the compliance firm. We're the council. We know of a major category, or I know of a major category called lost revenue. And last I knew, Ms. Madam Chair, Madam Finance Chair, Finance Committee meeting, that it would be between eight and 35 million out of the remaining 70 some million. So for me, I can't speak for my colleagues, but for me, once I can move that 35 or 40 million in the lost revenue column and see what I got left, that's gonna determine whether or not I want to vote to spend 8.6 million of that leftover money for 300 in water credits, particularly when the water crisis was man-made, primarily the state, emergency managers. I'm not going to vote for 8.6 million on the front end and don't even know what I'm going to do with the lost revenue and to make sure that this government runs without a projected deficit. So I know exactly why I'm asking what I'm asking, and I know exactly why it's relevant to this 8.6 million, almost 10 million, of a remaining 30 some million, and we haven't even dove into an overall scheme. And so I appreciate what we've been able to discuss today in a finance committee meeting as it relates to these remaining OPA funds and the mechanics of how we should go about it. Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Um, would anyone else have any questions in regards to the special order, um, in regards to the uh, addressing the water bills of the city of Flint with American Rescue? Um, yes. I do have maybe two questions, and, and I will keep mine simple. But does anyone else have any questions? Anyone else have any questions? I do, Madam Chair. I have a Councilwoman Winfrey Carter, you have the floor. Okay. First, I want to find out, as far as this water credit, um, who set it at $300? The administration. Okay. Um, I would think that, I would think that as a council, we would increase that if we were, if we were to give the residents anything. And, and in fact, I would think that we would just go ahead and clear everybody's water bill, put it at a zero balance. If we're going to do something, and if we're going to do something historic, like some of my colleagues um, mentioned, let's do something historic. That would be something historic. Just hypothetical. Um, would that be a eligible expenditure? to zero balance everybody's water bill? Could that? I'd have to do a little, a little more research on it in theory, but I'll have to come back to you. You could set aside effectively whatever the balance is that you want and use it as what would be considered direct housing assistance. Mm -hmm. So I, I could see that the mechanics are there, but I'd want to get into the literature a little bit and. Quite honestly, Treasury came out with new guidance yesterday. I just want to have a chance to look at it. Okay. Could you, could you do that and kind of let the yes, council know? That's, that's been a question that a lot of residents have, um, have called and have yeah. voiced. Um, now, now my only comment to that would be, you know, would council 
consider that to be a transformational use of the funds given the one time opportunity you have with the 90 million but that's yeah you know that that and that's part of what and part of what I'll do as well is look at how others are using the dollars to mm -hmm. see if there's anything similar to this that's been proposed and and I'm just saying I'm just saying you know what this municipality we pay the highest water bill Okay, we pay the highest water fees. <laughs> and I mean, our city, although I think, I think um, the community, the residents here in the city of Flint, we are resilient, okay? But we have really been hit with the whole water crisis. And when you talk about relief for the residents, that would be the ultimate release, relief to, to clear everybody's uh, water bill balance and we can start afresh. And then we could really focus on people can maintain their water bills and then we can focus on building back up our tax base. That's the bottom line here. Yeah, and yeah. I, I know some of my colleagues that they talk about leveraging funds and everything, but in, when you think about leveraging funds, that would be one of the best ways to leverage because we're helping the residents, we're, we're, we're starting afresh, and we can then focus on moving this city forward. And I've just been really thinking about that. $300? What, what is $300 gonna do? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little um, water credit. But you know what, I am so sick and tired of the residents here in the city of Flint. I'm tired of us always settling for less. We should, we should, we should have our bar so high. Because See, the city of Flint, the residents here in the city of Flint, of Flint, we have been through some hard times. Not to mention paying these high water bills. So, please, if you could do that, I would appreciate it very much, and I would be looking um, for that email. If, if, I, if I could say another thing about it, uh, the challenge, another challenge as I'm thinking about this, um, is that you would then be, so, so if somebody might have a $3,000 delinquent water bill and somebody may be current. So by paying all of the back water bills, you're not necessarily giving equitable treatment to the citizens of the city. So some of the complexities that may come with that is things like income qualification, analysis of the accounts. There would have to be a pretty, uh, a pretty deep dive into that because you would not, you would be effectively benefiting a small group of individuals at a much higher level than others. Yeah. So just something to, Okay. I, 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 again, I'm processing. I right. So. And, 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 and that's one of my, um, that's one of my problems with this $300 credit. We have people who, whose water is going to be turned off. And I can't see I can't see why we cannot give them the $300 as part of their balance, as part of a, their bill payment um, for their past due balance. You know, I would, I would be more inclined to vote for this water credit if I felt like it was helping everyone but I can't vote for just the credit because I need to think about those people who are in danger of their water being turned off, okay? They need to be able to have their $300 put towards their balance that's due right now. So, so that's, that's, my, that's my hesitancy in voting um, yes for this water credit. And, I can't, I can't do it. So, but thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Councilman Pfeiffer. Yeah, real quick. I know that 
Um, there's been a lot of talk about the water crisis and this, and it's we're really conflating two different issues. This is this is COVID money. This is money designed to um, help the, the the issue during COVID. It has nothing to do with our water, our overall water issues. Uh, with Mr. Mays's point, um, let's go let's go after the state for for additional monies for credits. But that's not to do with this ARPA money. This is COVID money. So, in to your point, Ms. Um, Winfrey Carter, on the three hundred dollars, it's at a the three hundred dollar level is at a point where it helps a lot of folks. Well, it's going to help you know the whole city, but it's not where it's at a point where it's going to incentivize people not to pay or people who haven't paid. If we zero out that, we're going to encourage the people that haven't paid that could have paid. The people who haven't paid and, and can't afford to pay, that's a different story. But in, there's inco income investigation and all that stuff on the people who haven't paid just because they didn't want to. And I don't want to reward that by zeroing out those folks and leaving the, the folks behind that really couldn't pay. So I think there, that's the discrepancy. And I believe the $300 is a little bit of a sweet spot where it helps everybody across the board, you know, and that's, and that's why I'm coming on, on the, the side of is it's not rewarding people that didn't pay. It's not, you know, disincentivizing future people to pay and to put it on, say, to, to, to do um, the past due balances and get people that aren't going that's to put that towards their balance so they don't get shut off. To me, that is incentivizing them to not pay for an additional two months. That may be true on some and maybe not, but to me, if we allow that, then we're just going to have the same issue in two months when that $300 is gone. That's my opinion, um, but I think that we need to deploy this money as soon as possible to the community. That's where I'm at. The, when we got this money a year and a half ago, it was worth $100, was worth $100. Now $100 is worth $87. So it's not really a $300 credit, it's a $268 credit if we're thinking about inflation. So uh, we need to get this money in the community as fast as possible. And I'm getting so many calls about, I need this money. So that's where I'm at. So I, I know that this was specifically about the relief credits and we veered off course there, but during the motion, maybe we can have more conversation about whether or not we can put this towards credits or, or towards shutoffs or not, but that's where I'm at. Thank you, Councilman Pfeiffer. Councilman Murphy, you like the floor, sir? You have yes. the floor. I would like to make a motion to do all things necessary to um, amend the $300 water credit per resident to add also, in addition, allow $300 to go towards payment arrangements for those who are um, behind with the 10% down or whatever is needed for them to um, keep their water on with an agreement with the water department. Start that over because you, okay. you, you, you put I would a lot, like, let because me, I know there's the, the payment program and so you're adding the, you said you do so, all so things I would necessary like to, put a, to motion on the floor mm -hmm. to amend the 300 water credit per residential house household and or allow $300 to be a down payment assisted towards the rear with the agreement point that of, they point made. Of information. What's your point of information? Um, Council I guess Biker. point of information, point of order. Can you do that when we're on the resolution so we can close this order? Say that. Say you that said, can you do can this you? during the when we're on the resolution so we can get yeah. out of the special order? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you withdraw? Absolutely, I'll withdraw it. Thank you. Thank you. No okay. problem. Um, 
anyone else wants to speak, and I'll be the last one. Anyone what? else? Yeah, and I'm real quick, Mr. Draczynski. Um, you, Mr. Whittigan, and Amanda. Um, Mr. Whittigan, could you and Amanda please come forward? It'll be quick, because I just want to ask you. I'll start with you. I have my question for you. Um, have you ever created an application um, for, because our form has been a big issue. So the criteria you stated that you me. were not, um, you did not create the application for the city of Flint. Is that correct. correct? That's correct. Okay, have you created one before? And did you give um, the guidelines <laughs> to the yep. city that we needed to have? Yes, we've supported, the, as I said, we've supported the process, had edits and comments and so forth, but yes. Okay, but you did not do ours. Correct. Okay, and then, um, when you, but you've done them prior, right? You've created them prior, correct? With Ernst and Young? Yeah, yeah, oh yes, of course. How long does the process normally take? Well, I mean, it, it depends on exactly what the program is and okay. so forth. Um, I, I think in this case, openly, the, the challenge is we haven't yet approved where the funds are going to be spent so putting applications together is a bit of a challenge because you don't know what you're opening up to who. Okay, and I've looked at the notes. So your notes were in where we had the two yellow boxes, the additional comments. Is that correct? I'm s say that and again. On the spread, the Excel spreadsheet, you started processing them, and you sent us back. I had flipped off my screen. You, you yep. Okay, so the additional comments because there were, I think there was only one word you said you didn't. You, the person couldn't understand what Well, there are a couple of yeah. forms, and in, in the new batch too, where it's sometimes hard to decipher exactly. Sometimes yeah. we get forms that say, without getting too far into it, that say whatever you can give me, okay. which okay. is hard to. Okay, see, my questions for you were simple. That's it for you, thank you. Mr. Whittigan. Uh, a couple questions. Um, Feb in, during February the 14th, you had stated to council that the form would be ready in seven days. Can you tell me what, what, um, what's hindering that? Because we are now in August headed into September. And that's uh, what, six months? I would have to go back and uh, review the tapes. I believe we were talking about a different topic, so I'd have to check that out. Okay, and, and, and I did look at it. and. He, you have very good conversation and dialogue. I thought I had actually voted on it, and I didn't. I voted no, no for the form, and I, I had not. Um, and I've, I've watched it too, and with your night, I think you've watched it too. And I know that Councilwoman Priestley had asked at that time to have a detailed budget with it. Um, that was her question, or her response that she wanted to add, and then other council members had also weighed in. Is that a part of the new form? Can you tell us about the form? Because I'm getting calls a lot now. And so I would like to be able to tell them that we're doing something, you know, other than not having nothing done. Because I don't like the, the, the nothing, the gray zone, because people are turning in these, these forms and expecting an application, and, you know, that they're going to take what they fill in. And what I'm telling people, is that no, that's not, we have another step in the process. So as our CFO, can you tell me the step in the process that you see us going? Because right now we got a lot of nothing zone. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you are telling individuals that that's not, that that one page form, you know, no dollars will be distributed based off of that one page form. So we have been working very hard with, uh, as Ms. Ferguson had said, we've been working with the ad hoc committee, we've been working with our partners, the philanthropy partners, to develop a multiple page form which hits all the required topics uh, to receive fun f funds. So this is just basic information that you need to distribute uh, federal grant dollars such as previous year's tax returns. Uh, are you in good standing with the state as a business? Uh, there's a city application form, a W-9, so we can actually pay you. Uh, there will be as Ms. Ferguson said, there'll be TAs, technical assistance, made available to people. If you have questions on the form, we're going to, you know, there will be people made available to walk you through it and ensure that your questions are answered and you, you are able to fill out the form. But, mm -hmm. you know, those are just some examples of what is required per federal guidelines before you can distribute federal grant dollars. 
And I completely understand that. So let me be clear too, because I don't want my words to be mistaken like you don't either. Um, I have not told people that, that, that they're not gonna be paid by beginning the process, I have not. But I wanna be able to give them good information so that they will know that the city will be contacting them or it's, I don't even know who would be contacting them when we go to the next phase. But I would like to have clear transparency so that they will know, because they're turning, and they're turning them at a higher rate now, um, the forms. And so I wanted to make sure that we're, you know, I'm clear that their information that is put on that form that I will not take away the power that the council did, because they voted on that. We voted. So I will not say that our power and our input was obsolete because it was not. But we do, we're waiting on the compliance firm to make sure we are in compliance and making sure it's done correctly, that the funds are distributed correctly so that they can receive and that the city is not responsible to pay those monies back. So how much longer are you looking at? We are, we have meetings, uh, another meeting set up with the ad hoc committee, um, Wednesday I think, or Tuesday, might be tomorrow morning. Uh, we also have weekly meetings with our philanthropy partners, uh, so we're close to wrapping that up, and as I believe I've stated prior, we'll be sure to schedule a special meeting with you all uh, so we can go over this form and you can ask all the questions that you might have. Okay, and so what is the, the biggest part that's difficult with getting this form completed? Just want to make sure that one, it's it's easy, easy, easy for individuals to fill out, you know, for organizations to fill out. We don't want to overburden some form. Uh, two, there's a lot that goes into it, review process to make sure that we're all on board and we have the, the uh, needed data, such as the compliancy points. Uh, so we just want to make sure we get this right. You know, just like other cities across the country, you don't see a lot of cities spending millions of dollars in ARPA funds yet because they are making sure that everything's right. Nobody wants to give back this money. So no, of course what not. we have brought forth before you as in resolutions on ARPA has been thoroughly vetted through Ernst & Young, but now it's time, as you said, to go to the next step and, and uh, get out the application for our small businesses, et cetera. So are we looking at 30 days, another 90 days? Can you narrow that time frame down? Because people are calling and they need the residents it's their money we need to you know it's the people's money we're supposed to do something great for our community you know and, and people are calling for various reasons so as the city we need to be able to give them a time frame 30 days 60 days 90 days by the end of this year we need a a date to let the residents know and we keep that's this is not our money this is the people's money Amen. you know and we need to make sure that we're servicing for me it's all the people because no one has one, the people who are filling out, they want roofs, people want assistance, they, windows, they want water credits. People want very, you have people who are nonprofits um, who want to do something in the, in the community, they want to work with children. So there's a big, you know, a wide variety of uh, things that people want to use and we need to have a time. I don't, I don't, I don't like not having a time. So if we can say before November, I mean, because you want it to be user friendly. And you came before us in February and said, you seemed very confident when you stated, I would be ready in a week. And we did not get that. And you came, I believe, again in June. And we still don't have it. Amen. So when I'm looking at that time, I want to give something that we can tell people. If, if you're comfortable with 90 days or emailing me, or you want me to shoot you an email, um, so that we can get, you know, something so we can start telling people. Because the counseling office, I was in there one day, they're getting really bogged down, you know. And if people are going to have to start coming back again to go to the next step in the process, um, they're going to have to be prepared. Because I don't know, I, I don't know if we got almost 200 of them in right now. About two. <laughs> so, I mean, we, I, we need to get ahead of that. I, and for me to have that, you know, that we're working on one accord. Um, how many pages so far do you have it down to? I believe it, not, uh, in total it's about seven, seven pages. Okay, that's pretty lengthy. Okay, and will this document, document be available online? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, and hopefully in a, it will be available online in a fillable form, so you don't have to print it and handwrite it if you don't want. 
That would be great because some people's handwriting is difficult. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, that is all my questions for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Chair. I did have a question for Amanda. Yes, Councilman. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Amanda. Hello. Hey, quick question. I did request to get um, information for the programs uh, to help the people with the water um, mm -hmm. who owe past due balances. I have not received the programs yet. Because if we can use that money um, to help them, that to me really weighs on um, getting that out the way. We can use other ARPA funds. You were stating that there were programs to help residents. I have not received those yet. Okay, um, I did give it, I didn't get all the links. I, I sent it to our IT staff uh -huh. to put it on the website, and I know Rob had, okay. Yeah, so we had put it on there because we did receive something from my half, which was a toolkit that we could put it on, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and all those other ones. So um, I have to follow up to see if they have done that yet, because we had, I'd give those to the IT department so we could put it on the website. Yeah, and if you could please, again, um, if you could send it to the council, all of us, okay. because I'm quite sure all of us in our ward would be able to, um, I need to let people know, and other okay. council members too, um, so that we can have that information. So um, was it three or four programs that you stated? I can't recall now. Um, there's the My Half, which is for the homeowners. There's the Lewa um, and the Sarah, and the, um, because there's in the RAP program. So that the um, LIWA and the SARAs for um, tenants. But okay. the SARA program also helps for rent and utilities, so. I see, and, and like I said, we didn't know that until you, you shared that. So I believe in sharing information and being transparent, because I thought mm -hmm. those programs were great when you were mentioning them, yes. and we had not heard of them. Yep. Um, and I think that way, you know, if we can save some of our ARPA to do something else greater, um, because we've got, we've got a lot to do. Right. Um, I want to be able to help the residents. And I think you had told me that it was six weeks that from the time that they apply that they would, uh, the money is given to your department to process. Yeah, approximately six weeks. Approximately yes. six. See, but we do flag. Halfway good. Yep. <laughs> we do flag the account so that way, because um, right now we start doing non-pay. So if there is a flag on the account, we mm -hmm. do not um, turn them off because we know we're going to get the money because they've already been approved. Okay. So do you need me, do you need me to shoot you another email? Um, generally, yeah, I send me one. Okay, I'll send you. Yep. I'll send you the one that I sent you again. I think it was okay. two weeks um, ago. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, but it was the time, yeah, you, yep, you made the referral and I said to you, Councilman, right before, and I'll resend that to you, because okay. I think that's something that's extremely helpful, so we can get out of the water, water credit crisis, or dealing with the water, because you are cutting off water. Yes. And people um, who have not made any payments have had their water cut off. Yes. And you're going into, I think, your next phase, um, yes. and people are asking, I don't know how, you know, when they come down, if they're able to get help. But I know that um, there are many people who do need it. And the $300 credit, which my colleague said, does not stop or prevent your water from being cut off. It's applied to your balance, but it does not prevent the shutoff. So you're not taking off the shutoff list because it's not a payment. Yeah, it just reduces down your, what your 10% would be. Right, your balance. Okay. Correct. That's all that, thank you. And if you can, I'll shoot you that email again. Thank you. Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. If you listen close to what's been said on this record, it was said that the minute the application is ready, it's going to be ample people to walk folks through. Who going to provide those ample people? Through you to Mr. Um, Jarzinski. Because I don't fool with Whittigan. Mr. Jarzinski, could you come to the podium? <laughs> this guy please? tell you anything. Um, Mr. Jarzinski, have y'all been asked to provide a group of people to walk these people through these applications? Do your million dollar firm provide people on site to do that for Flint residents? My understanding is that the, what are they called? No, I want to know what you understand. Be, I ain't even fooling with that. We're not yet. doing that. No, the philanthropy partners are providing those. Beg your pardon? The philanthropy partners are providing those individuals. Who would be responsible? Philanthropy. Huh? 
He said the philanthropy partners will provide. Philanthropy partners. <laughs> Who are they? That's made you messing me up with philanthropy. Yeah, the My <laughs> Foundation and Committed. I mean, come on, Mr. Jasinski. If you don't know, We're say you don't know. I'm not We're trying not to providing them. Beg your pardon? We are not providing them. Okay. Because, see, a lot of stuff been made up. You know, in February, the application was supposed to be ready. It's August. Mr. Jasinski, may I talk to you on what you know? See, I like to ask the tough, pointed questions. I don't bend more believe it's going to be no more of a crew of people helping folks when this flood of our residents come to City Hall than it is going to be the one person on Thursday for the rap program. That's what I believe. I believe that folks will stand up here and say whatever they think this council will buy into. Now, my position is this. I'm going to just say what I believe. I believe that this 8600000 was put on the table by Mr. Neely and some folks he got on council to try to give everybody in the city with an active water count $300 to get some votes prior to the primary election, and we stopped it. Now, that's what I believe. I, I believe it was done intentionally, precisely, and some of the folks on this council who supported Neely was trying to buy into it and spread out $300 checks. It was not well thought out. Some of them same council people was the same one saying we need to use... Um, point of order. What's your point of order? Um, our colleagues are making accusations that he do not know nothing about. We, this is a special order to talk about um, this water. Here we is going on two hours on one special order. We ain't even got into the finance business. And now you, usually the um, order of business is the chairperson speak last. You, the special, we don't allow him to talk as long as he done talk. Now you spoke, so we thought we was about to close this out to go into the agenda. We still waiting to um, work, deal with the first agenda. Now here he is. Making point of order. Dungan is he the using the point of order to get the chair? He got a point he trying to make. I mean to get the flow. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Councilman Murphy, I'll finish and I'll rule on your point of order. Are you done? No. He, his accusations about what he think about our, our colleagues has nothing to do with this special order. He don't have no facts and he just shooting from the hip. And you the last person to usually speak. So after you speak, we should be done with this and move on with the city business so we can get this work done so we won't be in here all night. Okay, thank you, Councilman Murphy. Councilman Mays, your point of order, sir, can you repeat that again? Yeah, a special order ain't saying it's one round, you the last to speak. This guy is new. He don't know. And I got the right to say what I believe is happening politically. So he can't take the flow. He didn't use the point of order to give a speech and take the flow. If his point of order was that you the last to speak, that's not true. This is a special order I requested. And we don't, and, and it'll close, it might close out with me and it might not. But I got the right to respond to what I heard my colleagues say in a special order I requested. Thank you, Councilman Mays. You want to wrap it up? Sir? Yeah, I will. Mr. Murphy gets a little hot under the collar when you call him out. And I've called him out as one of the supporters of the five or six. Point of information. What's your point of information? To you through the speaker, do you know, have you heard or have I met, do you believe or do you know it's factual that you know who I'm supporting? I believe I do Thank know. Thank you, Councilman Since you want to ask the question, I believe it, I Council believe it, I believe it. I watch your votes. Point I'm of order. Councilman Mays, Councilman Murphy, what's your point of order? He is not germane to the special order. Who I'm supporting for mayor has nothing to do with what this man is talking about. Thank you. Your point is taken, Councilman Mayor. That's you his were, opinion. You were, you were wrapping up. Yeah, that's his opinion. When you want to dish out $300 
to every active account and you're in a political arena and you want to do it right in the middle of an election. This money done sat here for over a year. Now, I know politics, and I ain't one to keep them to myself. I so believe you ain't the only one on this council that supports a certain person, Mr. Um, Murphy, and you can't convince me you don't vote. I believe you vote. I believe you vote for particular people, and you didn't show me point, over. Point of order. What's your point? Again, of order? Um, Madam Chair, that this man is not. To, who, Councilman Mays. He is not germane to the special Councilman order. Mays, can you please? Oh please? yes, I am. Can you wrap When it you up? talk about eight million dollars being dished out by some politicians in the middle of an election, it's germane. That's a. Right now, it's a waste of money. And the reason it's a waste, because as I've evidenced on the record, you don't even, ain't even looked at fixing the $15 million projected deficit. And any council person who controls finance, who don't understand, you better fix and plug up some holes before you go to dishing out $8.6 million and for those colleagues like Herc and Rhoda and Presley who said we ought to take this money and leverage more money, why are you going to spend $8.6 million ain't using it to leverage another $8.6 million for water and the state was the main culprit? The only thing that makes sense to me why people are trying to move expeditiously because they're trying to make a certain politician of themselves look good. They're not being fiscally responsible. See, we just had a memo about all these devices and the way folks communicate in a council meeting. I know the politicians. I know who they is, how they think, and what they do. We put in the move from this special order to see if it's five votes to spend almost $10 million prior to budgeting all the rest of the money. We put in the move from a special order. I'm listening at Mr. Pfeiffer. I'm listening at Mr. Murphy. Vote ready to vote on close to $10 million out of a remaining 30 or 40 million and ain't even budgeted the other money. That's highly, to me, irresponsible, suspicious, and highly political. And so for Mr. Murphy to get hot up under the collar because I say what I believe is very telling to me. He ain't the only one hot up under the collar when I connected to political point of order. candidates. Madam <laughs> um, President, now, we started, now, chair, chair excuse me, but real, I'm, let's keep it real. We've been in here, we started at 5.05, it's going on seven o'clock, two hours, majority of the time, this. First war councilman done monopolized this platform. We allowed him the opportunity to speak, and here he is, keep talking about what he think Quincy Murphy is doing, and it ain't germane to the special order. And we need to be wrapping this up to move on, so we can get the business done. And you allowing him to keep on dominating me, talking about what he think he don't know nothing about what I'm thinking. He swear he in my head. Point of order, Madam Chair. Is he using these privilege motions to get and take the floor and make statements? Thank you. Council Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I am going to wrap up, and I have that right. This ain't, this ain't a privilege that you've given me. This is an election that I won. I've got a right to speak my opinion. And so Mr. Murphy think it's a privilege that you've given me, but in fact, it's a earned elected right to speak my opinion as an elected representative. 
my opinion don't have to be the same as his. And so that's why he's way misguided. He can have his opinion and he can buck up against mine. But I've been elected. I done sat here for nine years before I even knew he existed on the council. And I'm going to say what I have to say under my freedom of speech. I'm going to talk politics and I'm going to talk factual things. And it's factual when this came out. Ms. Winfrey made a, co a, 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 a comment about it. Now it was postponed the finance committee meeting. I was curious to see what folks would say. I wanted to see what Hurricane Rhoda was going to say about leveraging funds. I wanted to see what Ms. Priestley was going to say about leveraging funds. Because when we tried to give 600000 to the North Flint food market, they was in an uproar. We shouldn't spend money. We need to figure out what we're going to do and leverage funds. Her, Priestley, Worthen, now $8.6 And we hear crickets about leveraging funds. If we can take 16 million and leverage 40 something million with the land bank, the county, and others to tear down houses, we shouldn't spend a clear 8.6 million without trying to leverage more money from the state and everybody else responsible for this water debacle. So Mr. Murphy, Ms. Worthen, Pfeiffer, Priestley, Herc and Rhoda, y'all might be the new majority, but I'm in the minority, and I'm going to have the minority opinion, and it's going to be on record and said well what I believe, what I know, and what I think. It ain't nothing you can do to stop it, um, Mr. Murphy. So the three, four minutes you wasted, just subtract them from here. I to be done. I ain't studying what you're talking about. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Um, anyone else? Madam Chair. I move that we close this special order. This special order. Is Support. Someone's microphone is not on. Did you second it, Ms. Priestley? Yes, sir, ma'am. Is your microphone is it on? It was me. Point of order, Madam Chair. I apologize. Chair. Point of order. What's your point of what order? What did they make a motion to, 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 to stop the special order? She made a motion to close the special order. You can order that without objection. Thank you. And so order it, we'd be gone. They don't need you. no motion for that. Thank you. I make a, I'm going to order this um, special order to be closed without objections. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Herkenroder. I'd like to make a motion to send a master resolution to council with any separations. Okay, there's a master resolution to on the floor to send um, all of the resolutions to council. Are any, it, with any separations. Are, I'm getting, hold on, because Councilman, are there any separations? But you, Madam Chair. Hold on, Councilwoman Priestley, because Councilman Mays did something right before. He yeah, I was just going to call a point of order and ask what uh, separations allowed. Yeah. So. Yep. And we're... And Councilwoman Priestley? I'll second that motion. It has been property second. Are there any separations? Madam yeah. Chair. Council, what it was, let's do ladies first. I'd like to separate 220300. Okay. Councilman Mays, sir. Yeah, Madam Chair. I'm looking at um, 220347. I like that separated as well. Okay, any more separations? Madam Chair. Councilman Priestley. 220348. Point of information. What's your what point of information? That? Uh, she said item number 220348, which was to provide funding, Office of Public Health American Rescue Plan, our ARPA funding act, ARPA funding. So she wants to separate 220348. It's at the top of page five of your um, finance committee agenda. Are there any more separations? Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. 
Yeah, after I ask a couple questions, I'll decide if I have any more separations once we get into the discussion. Okay. So we are separating item number 220300 and item number 220347 and item number 220348. The other residents. That's it. Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, through you to Chief Green. Chief Green, could you approach? Chief Green, I'm going to ask you to shed some light on this for me. Um, it says block safety, public safety surveillance camera space. What's that, three? Can you shed some light on that resolution? Uh, is this on? Yep. It's on. So yes, this is a um, initially um, flock camera system program or project started out with um, 25 cameras. Um, due to the success of these cameras, um, meaning when I say success, they've solved and prevented lots of violent crime incidents, homicides, shootings, drive-by shootings portion of the, the initial 25, these cameras were, they were strategically placed throughout the city, but we didn't have coverage throughout the entire city. So this expansion um, covers more portions of the city. How I, many cameras is this requesting for? It's, it's not, it's just an, uh, I think it's a total of 62, 68. This is a request for 60 some additional. It'll be a total of six, no, not additional. It'll make it a total of 68. So this is a request <laughs> that will take it from, you said initially, 25 to 68? Yes. This, this is the, they've already been installed. This is just an annual um, cost for these cameras. So and this is an annual cost for the 68 cameras? That's, that's correct. Without this 92,000 or so dollars, the 68 cameras would disappear? Absolutely, yes. And so there are 68 cameras strategically located around the city. Yeah, I believe it's 68 with, um, and this the phase three also has um, shot spotter technology attached to it. So. And who's monitoring these cameras? Our Intel Center and our officers that are um, they can go onto their um, laptop computers that's installed in their vehicles. Um, they can monitor, um, these can be monitored from an um, electrical device. So basically, it can be monitored by the officers that are on duty. Do you, have any, Intel Center do you have any statistical data as the success rate as it relates to solving certain incidents with these particular cameras? Yes. I would like to see some of that. I can have um, Detective Booth prepare, prepare, uh, prepare those. Yeah, I can't speak for my colleagues. I'm a supporter of cameras. Yep. You know, I've proposed a million or more dollars for cameras. Yeah. So the 68 cameras, if they're, being, if they're successful, I want to know their success rate because I want to spend more money for cameras. Uh, that's, no, that's no problem. I can get those, fig uh, have that data for you. Okay. If that's no problem, I want to see how those 68 has did. Because if you had to estimate, how many would you need citywide? Oh. Well, these first three phases, they're strategically placed in our hot spots, our high crime areas. But if you want to cover the entire city, I, I, I guess just roughly, probably. 24, probably 25 to 50 more. And see, so you're a little more conservative than me, because you'll say 25 or 50 more, I'll say three or 400 more. Because you say hot spots, hot spots can pop up from anywhere. And I want it to be known that if things are going on, whether it's speeding, whether it's shootings, murders, that Flint has got an eye on. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to support it, but I want to hear a little more about it because I'm an advocate of more, not less. 
Thank you, uh, Chief. Through you, Madam Chair, to um, whoever can speak on this city-owned land that's up for sale. Who can speak on that? Suzanne is headed up here. While she's coming through you to the city attorney or to our staff, did somebody give a written request to, for a resolution to sell them houses that people living in the city own that I talked about a week or two ago in the meeting? Have that written request for those resolutions been sent over to legal yet? Well, I want it to be worked on in less than the next two weeks because these people have been sitting in city-owned houses for four, five years, and they got the right to own their own house. And we got a duty and a responsibility to make it move. And it shouldn't take a written request from you, Janelle, to the city attorney, but if that's how they want to play the game, let's get that request done. Thank you. Madam Chair, through you to um, Suzanne. It says some side lots owned by the city is fixing to be sold. What was the process? Um, the process as outlined, excuse me, in the property disposition procedures is that um, frequently we get requests from um, people who have been taking care of a lot that's adjacent to their own property and they reach out to us requesting to purchase that lot so that they can then combine it. Um, sometimes they want to erect a fence, etc. So they submit an application um, to the city, <clears throat> to our, our planning and zoning staff, and the staff review that application. The procedures as outlined, there are certain criteria that they have to be met. They have to be a qualified purchaser. Um, their lot has to be adjacent on at least one lot to the um, to the lot that they're wishing to acquire, um, and they have to then combine the lot. They have to record the deed when once they purchase it. Once this resolution is approved, um, they have to record the deed and then go through the combination process so that they can, you know, do what they are proposing to Ms. do. Ms. Wilcox, is the disposition policy attached to this agenda? Do you know? It is not. Okay, do you have a copy of the disposition policy with you now? Um, I don't have a hard copy with me. I provided it to you before I have it pulled up on my phone Okay, right I now. want you to provide the um, disposition policy on not just side lots, but any disposition policy that you have on selling city property. I want you to provide that for me between now and Monday. Is that a problem? I can do that again. It'll be the third time, yes. Okay, well, if it's the fourth time, I'm asking that you do it. Is you upset because it's the third time? No, I can provide okay, it Okay, you just want to make a point of it. Correct. That's how thorough I am. I wouldn't care if it's the fourth or fifth time. When I get to it, I'm requesting politely that you provide me a copy of the disposition um, a property, not just for side lots, but any administrative disposition policy that y'all have in your possession and or have amended. So that would be everything current. Is that a fair request? Yep, I can provide that as I stated. There have been some amendments to some of it, haven't it? Um, there was an amendment, amendment for the um, we only have one procedure right now, the property disposition procedure. So there was an amendment uh, last year, I believe, regarding commercial side lot. Yeah, Ms. Wilcox, I hate to cut you off, but I know for a fact there were some amendments, and that's why I'm requesting this, because when you, we looked at the disposition of the property that used to be the old St. John Center, and it was sold for 500000 there were some major discrepancies as it relates to the policy for me. And so I want to make sure that when I look at this thing Monday, it's going to have the current amendments and it's going to be all of the disposition policy that this council didn't vote upon that's coming from your office. 
So that's a fair request. We should have, I should have that by Monday. Sure. How will you get it to me? I'll provide it to um, the clerk's office and they can make hard copies and the rest of the council people I can email. And y'all put that in my mailbox. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman. Herkenroder, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, Chief Green and I think Lauren's name was on. Is Lauren here today? Rob, someone from finance, can you come on down? I just have a question about um, resolution 220339, which is the surveillance cameras. Um, I do just, as you're coming down, I'll try and give some background on this. So I do just want to clarify. So the resolution that we would be approving only mentions the approval of the acquisition of additional cameras. And so I'm just a little confused because the account name on the resolution is all about maintenance agreements. There's only one code for it. It's not split in to the maintenance agreements in addition to the acquisition. Addition, so that, that's question one, that's confusing. Why is it just coming out of one account? My second question is on the, um, and I apologize, my allergies are really bad today, so that's why I sound this okay. way. Um, the, the additional um, information that was provided to us with this resolution, it, it discusses the 25 cameras, and then there's a previous order for 12 cameras. But it just uh, something's not looking right to me, so I just want to make sure, are we purchasing 12 cameras in addition to the service fee for the 25 that we currently have? No, well, let me clear it up. It, there's a total of 68 cameras. There's a total of 68, I, I believe it's 68. Um, the initial project was only 25 cameras. From that 25, we expanded to the 68 that we have currently have now. There's an annual fee, the, the company that we get these cameras from, air, maintenance, um, any issues with these cameras, they're responsible for it. So that's, what, that's where the cost comes in. We already have the cameras, but um, the annual maintenance fees, the, um, the software right. attached to them, all that's included in our annual cost. Okay, so then I do just want to clarify then why the resolution specifically states acquiring more cameras. Yeah, I don't. But it's coming, that, that, yeah, that's why head finance comes yeah. out to you. Um, and then why it just says the maintenance agreement. So I just want to yeah. make sure that that is yeah. crystal clear for yeah. myself there's, and there's for no others more, who may the, be asking. The cameras we have, they've been installed and um, the maintenance and that all, the, the annual cost is, in, that's the right. maintenance agreement. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, what Chief said is accurate. It's just, this is just for maintaining the okay. cameras that we currently have around the city. Okay, just for both of your guys' reference, the way that the resolution reads, it doesn't say anything about the maintenance agreements. It specifically says, the police department is requesting the approval of acquiring the use of additional cameras. So that's a little confusing. I understand, I understand what's happening now. It's just a little confusing in case anybody else is looking at that. So, um, I mean, that being said, I'm still going to support this. It's just maybe as we keep doing this, because if, if my understanding is correct that this is an annual fee, <laughs> that we make sure that it's a little bit more clear um, for, for myself and for other members of council and the public. So, all right. Thank you. Yep. Councilman Pfeiffer. Yeah, real quick. So this is the maintenance for all 68, because if I'm doing the math right, this is only for the 25 and the 12. No, this is all 68. Do, can we have any documentation on that? Yeah, we should. Yes. Because we don't have any information of what this 92,500 is then. If you're saying it's for all 68, yes. none of our documentation says anything about that. We are only given the, from Flock, is only the acquisition paperwork from last cycle. I'm, I'm not sure what they, they sent you, but it's, this toss is for 68 cameras. And it was before you in November. Yeah, the, the, ac the acquisition was actually, we did some in um, last year, but yep. um, we don't have anything on the maintenance agreement in this, acquis or in this uh, documentation. I mean, if I do the math on the back of my head, it's the $2,500 
for each of the 25 cameras and the 12 equals out to the 92.5. So I'm just confused on how we're coming up with that for all 68. Yes. Yeah. I'm not understanding what you're saying, but we have 68 cameras and our cost. So what is the what is the dollar per camera per year? Do we know what that is? It's 2,500. Well, then that's not that's not the 2,500 times 68 is well more than 92. 170,000. That's what I'm saying. The 2,500 equals the initial 37 that we purchased. Yeah, we'll look into it, but it's, um, I could be confused on the cost. I'm confused. <laughs> so, so, so no, I, I guess my question is, how did we know that this 92 was due? Do we have any kind of an invoice from Flock? Yeah, we have it. That's, that's how we can generate we get, direct. Can yeah, we, I can get you the invoice. Can we get that? Yep, Thank you. No problem. By Monday? I can send it to you tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there anyone else? Yes. Councilman Murphy, you have the floor. Yes. Um, some of the areas that you guys have um, cameras, we had a discussion before. Um, lighting is an issue. Is that something that, in addition, that we need to look at adding additional lighting in areas where this camera at? So, therefore, when we are um, looking at these particular areas, what high crime or dumping mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so, the, the um, cameras that we're referring to now in this resolution, um, they're different than the um, cameras that you and I discussed reference for, that we have posted for um, illegal dumping. These cameras, lighting is not an issue. Um, um, but yes, for the cameras that we have installed to um, apprehend those that are illegally dumping, lighting is definitely an issue for those cameras, yes. In, in addition, I think it's equally important that you guys have a good working relationship with Arnold Brown because the simple fact, when we put in a request in for dumping in these areas, they go on to pick it up. So if, the, if there's not a communication with you guys, they, I don't know how y'all are actually monitoring the dumping. I don't want you to talk about it publicly so people yeah. can know how whatever. But whatever it is, if um, Arnold Brown and his crew is going to pick up that site, it seems like they need, it need to be some kind of collaborative effort that he can come or y'all can show him how to, or y'all pull the tape or him um, get in contact with y'all to let y'all know, okay, this one of the sites, you guys may have cameras up right here because we're putting in referrals for yeah. dumping. So, for instance, I put a referral in for a dumping. Once he went to the site and looked at it, we realized this site is a site where we got cameras up. I ain't going to tell people where the site at, but it's a site where they consistently dumping at. So, if he knows the, the sites, or even if y'all could get him a list of some of the sites that y'all got for high dumping, at least he'll have a map when he go to clean up that dump site like okay i can reference this map and here's where they got cameras so he could coordinate and be like hey i'm i'm going over here to this site again like he told me today i cleaned that site up mr murphy a couple of times i know that's why we got a camera there so we know that somebody dumping what happens when y'all um, catch somebody? Uh, we prosecute them. We seize their vehicle, and um, it depends on you know what offense they committed. We we attempt to prosecute them. Is it kind of hard for y'all to track down who doing it? No, not if we get a good description of the vehicle. Um, if they if they committed you know multiple illegal dumpings, it's pretty easy to um, apprehend them, catch them. 
Is it possible that we can expose them on the Flint Police blog, um, something, or some kind of the let the embarrassing them to let them know that y'all your cousin Ray Ray, <laughs> Doctor um, Liddell was down the street dumping. Yeah, we've um, we posted images on our Facebook page to try to identify those individuals. Okay. So yes. All right, that's it. I'm concerned about the lighting. Yep, so am I. All right, okay, thanks. Any other council members who have questions about the cameras in the first round? Any other council members in the first round? I do, and it's gonna be really, wow. Um, mine will be real easy. So, and thank you, Councilman Pfeiffer, because your questions were my questions too. Um, my question is, um, with this company, this is for maintenance, and this is for repair for the cameras, or it has to be for repair and then also, because I've seen them damaged, some of them. But is, what is the, and I know they're out of Florida, and I've seen them, I've talked to the people who are out of Florida. Are they, what is your turnaround that they're maintenancing these cameras? As soon as we put in the order. As soon as you put in the order? Okay, and, and how long does it take them? Because I know they are coming from Florida because I talked to them. No, no, they're not coming from Florida. They're coming from Detroit. Okay, the guy I talked to was from Florida. They're not coming from Florida. They're coming okay. from Detroit. I, mean, I, I, I know cameras, and you know that I know cameras. So my question was with him, because when you're, we're servicing them, and I, people do damage some of them in some areas. And I did speak with the technician who had come to Florida, and the camera had been down. So they, maybe they're using subcontractors, so maybe they've corrected that since this was in the winter time, since then. So the turnaround time for repairing them. So do, do they have like a re regular scheduled maintenance that they're actually coming to make sure, like is it a monthly maintenance schedule? How are they maintenancing the cameras? They're maintaining the cameras. Is uh, it on I'm need? not sure of their schedule, but mm -hmm. I don't. it's not weekly, it depends. It depends on, we put in a request that uh, cameras so what this company provides, let me simplify this. What this company provides is they're monitoring these cameras. So if they're not cap properly catch capturing the image, they call us and notify us and they send a technician. We don't do any monitoring of the, uh, of the maintenance if they're, if they're um, performing properly. That's what we pay them to do. So they send me a notification saying camera such and such numbers, such and such is not um, capturing properly, um, uh, a technician is on the way. Okay, so then that, so just so I've got some clarity, so it's only if the camera is an issue. That's that, correct. Okay, so they're not doing like a regular, like a maintenance, like every, you know, three months or quarterly yeah. with the 68 cameras to make sure that they're functioning yeah, right. They have to do, they have to do some um, routine maintenance that's, during the winter time that they don't have the to snow. do in the summertime. So, um, and that's, that's what we're paying for. So they notify us, uh, which has been very successful if the cameras aren't um, functioning properly. Um, but uh, again, I know for a fact they're not coming from Florida responding, they're re responding from Detroit. Okay, well this guy lied. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, know, it's, it, I, I started the program and I've been dealing with it since we uh, um, procured it. And I'm telling you, the technicians coming from Detroit. Well, I'll. I'll send you the pictures, and, and I think we've talked about it, because it was, it was winter, and my, that was my question, how are they doing the maintenance? Yeah. Because when I spoke with him, and that was my concern that we're, you know, how long is it taken for turnaround, you know, for someone to fix the cameras? Because I've seen some of them that have been damaged in the solar panels, which um, are attached to the cameras, which they were down. So that was my question, and then also figuring out um, how much is the price per camera, and then basically my questions that Councilman Pfeiffer asked. So I hear what you're saying, and I've talked with you before. To, this is what the guy stated to me. So, but my question is, if you fix that, I know often you don't have they don't have technicians who are available. Now, is this company out of Florida? No. They're not out of Florida? No. They're based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, Atlanta? Yeah. 
Okay. So, as I support the, the FLOC uh, program. I, I, I do, but my, my only question that I had that was left was, you know, getting them serviced. Um, and Councilman Mays had asked a valid question, um, and then sort of Councilman Murphy, when we have light and we talk about the deer cameras which need light, is it ever a possibility, say, in high dumping? Um, I have high dumping in my ward. And I don't care what they do to those garages on Bradley <laughs> and Sunset Village. It's, I don't, they act like it's a dump site, even with the barriers up there. Um, they're now taking, they've taken the doors off. Um, and they're putting the, I mean, if you're going through the trouble of putting it inside of an apartment, put it to your own curb. So I don't, I don't understand some of the, the dumping, um, the dumping. So are, we, are you looking to do more for like dumping because that part, I don't know what else that we, we can do. Yeah, that, that's a great point. The, the cameras, these cameras have um, assisted us in um, identifying those that's responsible for illegal dumping. Yes. So are you looking to get more for that because my area, and maybe I'm a little selfish, would appreciate that because the blight department has cleaned up as soon as they clean it up, somebody's toilet and mattress end out there in another week or so. Yep. Because I think that um, when we talk about there are two issues in the city, um, crimes associated with blight, and they go hand in hand. And we have a blight problem. And our blight crews don't like cleaning up the same spot over and over again. And I don't know, I don't, I don't, the work that they do to, to remove these, I don't understand it. I really and truly don't. They go through, and we pick up everything on the curb, and I, I, don't, I don't get it. Those are all my questions and for the first round. Does anyone have any questions in the second round? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Through you to whoever can answer this in the administration, what is this acquisition of vacant land at 1563 Penn Road? Who has information regarding that? Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, I'm glad that you're the one that have information because I got a couple questions about change order number one and number two as it relates to the Dort pump station and the secondary water source. What do you know about the acquisition of vacant land at 1563 Penn Road? What is it for? The vacant land is, is to buy a small square of land so that we can move the road over because we're going to have to move it to go across the different bridge area there. So we're trying to buy that up to get that bridge fixed and get around to make it instead of a, as tight of a turn in that as it is there. And it's privately owned by somebody named Brian Garzinski. To my knowledge, yes. And y'all want to pay him 5000 I think he's agreed to that, yes. What was the excess value of it, you know? I do not know. It was probably less than $5,000. You know, I'm watching all of these land sales, acquisitions and sales because along with certain folks in this administration and this council, they done gave folks hell. The engineer has some information that he want to share. Look like yep, it. You'll probably correct me. Madam Chair, through you to <laughs> the engineer, you say I'm probably correct. I Ms. Brown, he, he moving. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> you have the floor. Can I have? Yes. The price was agreed upon because we had to have appraisals done on the property because it's an M down. Hold on just a second. Can everyone here, because I know you are, Mr. Adis, you're much taller, I, and our mic is a foot down. Be because this project is going to be an M down project, we have to follow their procedures for purchasing land. So it had to be appraised officially through an appraisal company, and that's the price they came up with. There ain't no map attached to this agenda. See if you can get me a little map. I want to, you got it? You sure came ready, didn't you? Let me see what y'all talking about. I appreciate it. You got enough for everybody if they want it. 
I just want to glance at it. Is this piece here? This is 69. It's right here. And this is Spin Road. And this is the property. And so is it any houses around here? He just happened to have that piece of property. Three pieces. <laughs> I would have tried to sell y'all three as well. Okay, thank you. Now, Mr. Brown, through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, shed some light for me, if you will. Uh, the engineer, tell me your name. It's been a long time. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Mr. Brown, help me if you can. A change order taking this up over four million. A change order for two hundred and ninety nine thousand. Yes. Dort pump station. Where is that money coming out of? That money will be coming out of wind funds. That's what I thought. And it's unexpected money out of wind it funds. It is. And it's, but there is some monies that we, that we have there that can be used that way. Um, what it is is a spool piece that we went and took an x-ray of, and we had two choices, either to replace it or to wrap it. To wrap it was over 340000 to replace it was 299000 And in, in the checks there, we have sections. It's an inch thick. And there are sections that we found holes that were seven eighths of an inch deep. So there's only eighth of an inch between the water and busting out of that pipe. We can't have that. So we need to put a new pipe spool piece in. And the piece that you need is available for yep, purchase. It's being made and it will be here because it's specific size and that for this is not something that's, this isn't an average plant or an average pumping station. So it has to be made for it. Mm -hmm. And so y'all already then ordered them to make it. Correct. And they'll, they said they can get it to us pretty quickly because we're already in their queue, but we need to get the money there. So, so you assume and we're going to prove this I'm hoping and everything you do. will come together. <laughs> we need to keep moving these projects along. I'll keep moving them, but now keep in mind, you know, when it comes to the wind dollars, the pump stations, the stuff that was approved and people moving stuff around and then this administration being straight up and honest. I take you as a straight up and honest guy of what you told me in the hearings. You said some dynamite things in the hearings, different from certain other department heads. And so you up here on my list of getting good information. Uh, what you said on the oath and what you told me compared to what folks are saying around here, other department heads and in the news who down here with me, you up here. So I just have to ask you, and I believe you, when you start fooling me, I'm going to be surprised. So I take you at your word. I trust you. I'll be supporting this. Shed some light on the other change order as it relates to the secondary water source to Dort pump station. That's to cover the engineering costs, the extra engineering costs to get the extra work done that we're getting done. Just the engineering Just costs. the engineering. That's why it's not a huge amount, but it's still a goodly amount, but it's to try to get everything done because of all the changes we've done with that. Well, Mr. Brown, based upon the questions I've asked and what has been separated, I'm ready to move this stuff to council. I'll be voting to move it. Keep your integrity. Keep your honesty. It means something around here. I really can appreciate you. I'm going to be talking about it somewhere in the future. It's going to come into play with some other department heads and others. I've been sitting here for nine years. It's kind of refreshing when people, as far as I'm concerned, now you might not be, but I just believe it. You are honest, upright department head, and I appreciate you. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there a Councilman yes. Murphy? Yes. Um, 
to you, to Mike, to you, to Mike. I know this is not on the agenda, but could you update me on the fence on um, Western Road right there by the lake? Is that Kersley Lake? Point of, been, point of order, Madam Chair. What's your point of order? Is this the same guy who was checking me left and right about Jermaine and agendas? Okay, look, let me withdraw that. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Um, Mr. Brown, could you, Councilman Murphy, could you, you have the, he's asking you, you about the, the, the fence. Oh, we are currently, the, the um, what's going on out there is we're cutting all the trees down. And I think uh, in September, we'll be putting the fence up. We have a couple of weeks that all those trees have to be knocked out and pulled out so that we have enough room to get the fence into the right places. All right, and, and, and I'm done. But my last piece with that is, you know I want to try to get that brick um, painted um, when y'all do get the fence down. So I would like to work with you. I would love to see a mural or something put over there. So that's all I got to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Council Murphy. Any other council? Any other council? Madam Chair. And the second round, Council Worthing? Well, oh, your well, mic. Yeah. While well, Mr. Brown is still there, I see the resolution 220345. Additional engineering services, secondary water source, door pump station rehabilitation. Is this, um, what is this exactly? Because I know we just used our secondary source, correct? No, th this, this is for the pump station itself, oh. work being done. And it's the engineering because we have had extra um, monies have just like the 300,000 that we, 299 plus. Uh, that we have to have to get that spool piece done and we have to have the engineering and the inspections and such that have to go through that So that money needs to be put onto their contract to cover all the extra work that they're doing Okay, this is just the extra work for or the extra parts and the work to get it into place But there was engi there's engineering and other things that need to be added on because of that also and also I want to uh, com commend the DPW department for uh, switching our water source so quickly and that we did not have to have a boil water advisory uh, as the rest of the um, community that was using Gliwa did. Did you want to say anything about that at all? Uh, that the, the, the people at the, the water plant personnel on Saturday morning when we started getting the calls as well as the people that came in because we were getting calls and everything that went done, that was done, went according to plan. Um, we learned from it. There's going to be some changes in our SOPs and such, but we learned from it, and we were able to go through without a hitch. The city of Flint saw no pressure drops whatsoever in it, its distribution system. Thank you. Yeah, it's so refreshing to like. Not we were on top on that one. <laughs> yeah, if we didn't, if we didn't have that line in, we would be in serious trouble, just like some of our other neighboring areas. Yes, so I'm so glad that we've gotten that done with this administration, that secondary water source, and we were able to use it no problems. So right. yay for Flint, we have a win. That was on all that one. testing that we did in the last yes, year. Yes, I remember that. To make sure we could do it and switch correctly and, and did well. Thank you. That's all. That's it. Thank anyone else? I'm sure. Councilman uh, Pfeiffer. I, I too want, also want to commend. Um, everybody in DPW for making that switch. However, I think we need to improve our communications to the community. And hopefully that's in your SOPs of, of because it was in the news that we had a boil alert. So obviously some communications fell. So hopefully we can improve that. Can I speak on that? Absolutely. Um, the reason that there was a boil water is because when Detroit found out that they had a main break on their main line coming out of their water plant, processing plant, uh, treating the same water, Lake Huron water. They uh, sent that message out to everybody, to every single municipality that they had because they didn't know what was gonna happen. And in there, they even stated they wanted to err on the side of caution. Once they finally were able to find out what was going on, they then revised that list. Uh, our other problem is some of that stuff that happened uh, 
when I got the first list, that was the first time I'd even heard about it, that they posted it. And I'm looking at that list saying, why is Flynn in there? Because we didn't lose pressure. And I then contacted them very quickly. We are working on that also. We're working, but you have to remember, we're shorthanded on Saturdays to begin with. Um, on the weekends, we don't have as many crew around as we do during the day and the week. So we sometimes will be a little slower in getting out information because we need to make sure everything's right before we worry about making the phone calls to the press or getting that information out. Well, Glee will put that out, right? Right. So, but Glee will put that out without even talking to us about it. Is what I'm saying. That's I guess the communication with Gliwa and when we do switch over or whatever, however that happens. Yeah, we'll have we've, we've already had that talk. Improve that communication. That's my request. But uh, thank you once again, um, and all your uh, thank, and, thank and all your team members. Yep, the team members out there. They yep. did a great job. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. I have one question on, and I don't know who this is because I don't see. Um, Who the 220349, it's a side lot acquisition. I don't know if that's That's going to be Suzanne. Suzanne Wilcox. Ms. Wilcox, could you come to the podium, please? And Councilman Pfeiffer, the um, owners of, the, uh, of that lot are in the audience, okay. too or who are trying to acquire the property. So if you have questions. Um, Suzanne, I guess my question is, and maybe the owners can answer it. To me, all the documentation I have is the house that, that this is a side lot to is abandoned, boarded up. Is that not true? And they don't have an active water account? So what's, um, the, what's the point of this acquisition? Uh, you're talking, I'm sorry, 1107 South Grand Traverse? Yes, or? Yes, Okay. My understanding is that the vacant, the lot um, that they're acquiring title to is a vacant lot near the intersection of Grand Traverse and 7th Ward, directly east of the applicant address. Mm -hmm. You're saying that it's not? No, I'm saying it, it is, but I'm just trying to figure out the the property that they're utilizing as the main property to acquire this side lot is an abandoned house with no active water. So I'm just trying to, does that comply with our side lot? Does it have to be? Typically not. Typically. Usually it's an owner occupied and I don't have the application in front of me. So that's something that so, I would, so I could do So it would have to be an reason. owner occupied and it's, to me, it's an abandoned boarded up House, so. Well, I'm saying typically that is who requests a side lot acquisition as someone who's occupying the property next to it, and you're saying it's not, and I, and I don't have that application. Because I believe this, this property is directly behind it, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm just wondering. I'm just I'm just curious. I I want it off the city rolls, but I'm just curious to why if the house is abandoned, why are they want the side lot? or the back lot as well? That's my question. No, I think that's a good question, and I'd like to do a little bit more, re little bit more research um, okay. to find the answer to that, and um, I, can, I can do that before Monday. I think the applicant is right behind oh, you, so I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm ma Madam Chair, if, if, if you can approach the mic and answer that for me. Miss... Um, Toy Pritchin. I'm so, I'm <laughs> Hello, everyone. Pritchin? Uh, my name is Lena, Pr Lena, Lena Pritchin, and... Um, the taxes are paid on the house, yeah. and it is abandoned. It, it's in disrepair, actually. Uh, we're getting ready to rehab it. Okay. We've owned that property for at least 16, 17 years, and it's the backyard. And we thought we didn't know the backyard didn't belong to us until we got ready to. Uh, I want to. I want to use it for a uh, community. I want to help the community um, do a, a, a homeless shelter for 17 to 21 year olds. Okay, that's that's. I was just curious. I'm okay. seeing that, that it's abandoned house, and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. But if your if your end goal is to rehab that, then thank you. That's all I want. Okay, thank Th you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank do you. I get? Is, is it a done deal? Though? No, no, no ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just, no. They've they've asked. Um, I don't know if any uh, Councilman Fife, were you done with your questions? Um, you're. 
you're here, you answered the question, that was it. Oh, okay. So I don't think anyone else has any, any, more, question, any more questions in this second, in the second round? Any more questions in the second round? I'm going to finish mine. Um, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. Hello. Um, I want to talk about the, the switch in the communication. And I first do want to say that I'm grateful that we did have the secondary water source to switch to um, and that we were able to finally get that done. Um, the other part is when did the, um, when was the water reported with the, with the break? Do we have a time? Um, we noticed that, that our pressures were changing a little bit. They noticed that too at their MLA city station. They send out, we get notices continuously that a pump was low or a pump was faster or whatever. We get those constantly, but the crew that was, the crew member that was there, um, the foreman running, running the boards at the water plant took a look at that. And then we got another notification that said that they are having trouble somewhere. They weren't sure yet that, we're the, the, that they had a full break. That was about, I've got the sheet back there. I forgot to bring yeah, it up. Yeah, no, grab it because I, 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 this will answer okay. my questions. Thank you, Janelle. You stopped it. Thank you. What? Hold on, Nick. Oh, you're, it did get cold. <laughs> yeah, it did. See, Judy, you were worried about your legs, and it's your arms now. I'm cold. <laughs> Told you, you got a dress for in here. <laughs> okay, at 2.40 in the morning, there was a notification that was sent that said there's abnormal pressures were noticed. Um, they were looking into it. Um, at 5.46 in the morning, we started closing the valve to Gliwa. The reason for that is, is we have it open larger at night to take more water in to fill our reservoir, mm -hmm. or excuse me, our uh, yeah, reservoir, to fill up Cedar Street, and so that was open. We started closing that as they normally do. Third shift foreman um, received a call at 6 a.m. that they were asking for us to go ahead and shut our line down because of they're going to have to shut their line down because they have found a major break. We were already closing it, so then he took the speed and moved it so that it would start closing to completely close. At the same time, we were filling uh, Cedar Street. So Cedar Street then, uh, Closed at 616, started closing that valve off and started opening so that we could take the pumpage out of Cedar Street since we weren't going to be taking any water out of the, Glee, uh, of the Gliwa line. Uh, Gliwa at 620 sent out that approximately 430, they found that there was a main break on their 120 inch main that came to us at 620. And as I said, at 616, we were already closing Cedar to, to do it and to be able to start pulling out of cedar. During the time that those valves closed, we were running on the elevated tank. And it was lower flow, so we were fine. Again, no pressure changes, very little water being used at that time of the morning. Um, at 636, we notified GCDC that we would like to start taking five million gallons of water for the rest of the morning and work our way up to it. Uh, they agreed, uh, so we, we started at uh, 646, the fill valves was closed at Cedar. We started slowly opening the GCDC line. Uh, let's see, at 701, the control station for Gliwa was, was shut down. That was at 85 PSI. Normally it runs 90 to 105, so it was a little bit lower, 86. I think something when we closed it, and that was the lowest it got in our line. Uh, Pump number two at Cedar was running at 702 when everything else was going. That then refilled the, the tank and brought the pressure, kept the pressure up in the system. We started running on that while we were waiting for Gliwa or GCDC to start getting things done. At 930, they let us know that they had opened the 24-inch supply valve and closed the small valve 
and we could start then taking uh, water from them at a larger pace. Uh, by 10.30, Gliwa sent an email um, that they were going to have to isolate the 120-inch transmission main in port, at Port Huron. Uh, Gliwa uh, requested holding off filling our, res or our reservoir. Um, that really doesn't, didn't really matter that much because we weren't taking any water from them anyways. Uh, GCDC uh, was then producing more water and ramped their plant up to be able to handle what we needed. We had asked to go to 12 to 13 in the evenings and uh, seven to nine during the day and they have given us that. Uh, the first night they decided to let, ask us not to go up to the 13, so we took down Cedar Street a little bit that night. Normally we'd be filling it, but we used that as backup. Uh, the next night, Sunday night, that was Saturday night, Sunday night we started filling again, and we started at 13, or 15, three at Cedar Street. When all of this happened, that's what it was filled to. Uh, Monday morning we're at 15 feet, so we're only four inches lower than what before the crisis started, and we were getting enough water from GCDC, and everything has been steady state since. Okay, what time was the public alerted? I was in North Carolina, <clears throat> and I had my, some relatives alerted me that lived in Flint Township and also in Sterling Heights. And when we talk about the notification, it, to me, it's so important because of the water crisis. We let Flint residents know, and that to me, when when did um, you did you send out your alert? Because if we're looking at 2:40 a.m. Well, 2:40 a.m. There was just pressure fluctuations. Right, pressure fluctuations. It wasn't until six in the morning that they they thought of something, and I forget what time I said they that they uh, had told us that they were shutting down their 120-inch water main at 10:30. So 10.30, we knew that we weren't getting, beginning any more water from them. Right. And that, that was either just after that or just before that. They sent out an email, and it went to the free press and to every group that they're hooked to and said that we need to go on a boil water notice for just about everybody they serve us. Yeah, they had a list of 23, which affect, affected 935,000 water customers. Correct. And my, for me, information and transparency is important. Um, I would like to have had for, for the council for us to have received that so that we would know that there was an issue. Like we got a document today that you sent out that stated with Glee for us to restrain or refrain from water usage, basically to, you know, be careful how much we're using because we're, we're I believe, for the next two weeks. Um, It'll be three now, but yes. <laughs> well, my, my, then my, that document is obsolete that I shared already. <laughs> so, so if you have a, a one for the three weeks now, I would like to share it. I like to keep the, the community aware because we still have to be aware that Flint was poisoned for 18 months. Now, the switch, we look at the time, and that's, you know, and, and we had a secondary water source and we were able to tap into it. But we spent probably about, before we, how long did it take for the switch? Was, was it 4, 3.30? So nine hours we Pardon me? No, we started, we started. The switch? At six in the morning mm -hmm. um, by, at seven o'clock, Cedar Street was already supplying the city okay. of Flint. So it was one hour. To, to, from shutdown to switch over to getting pumping going and everything else. Thank you for that because that's the information that I wanted. So we, that was pretty smooth. And if we could just make sure, like for me, when you sit on information because you're the department head, I like to share it with people and make sure that customers know because there were things that were on social media and people were concerned. And I know that my relatives in Wayne County and Oakland County had gotten notice and we hadn't gotten notice. But thank you for all that you do do. Um, and I appreciate your transparency. I always have. I appreciate it. And um, good job. Well, good job to them. Well, I it's, mean, your, it's your my, team. Mine was jumping on front of cameras at 1130 on Saturday and starting giving out information. And, and I know you have an operator, is it 24 hours, that's yes. at the 
And, and that's something I think that most residents didn't understand, you know, that there is someone that's there 24 hours, or if there is fluctuations or something that's going on, that there's someone there monitoring that. Always. Um, so At least and, one body in that, that office, if not more. And my other question, do you think that in your, um, your standard operating procedures, is there anything that you think that you need to tweak or are you? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, yes. There's always something. Every time we come against something we haven't seen before, we haven't gone through this before, but everything right. went without a hitch, but we can still do it better. And we will. We have a team already looking at some of the data and trying to figure out what better could we have done, what can, you know, so that that can be taught to everybody at the water plant, all of the foremen understand it, and we'll even have, you know, have it in their book to be able to flip to to make sure they're following the correct procedures. And we're, I, also, we're also looking at that for, for getting information out to make sure and, and how we're gonna do that in the future. Well, I appreciate that because that was, a, you, know, and, and, you know, saying, hey, you know, we did this, but we can, we, can do it, we can do it better. And because Flint, people have concerns. If, I don't, if 100 years from now, they'll probably still be talking about the water crisis because it happened and, it, and, and people heard about it global. But saying that, you know, hey, we can, we can change this. Um, there were reassurances, you know, for me that we, I knew when I found that we had a person that was there 24 hours, um, I would just, you know, disseminating information, let council know. Um, and if you have that document to where now it's three weeks, because now my, op, my information is obsolete, if you could please share that. Well, it wasn't a document. It was, happened to be on the news because they said that, that they found in their inspections that they needed more than, than what they were able to buy immediately that was available, so they have to make the parts, oh. some more pipe, and so those sticks of pipe will be coming from Texas, but they have to get it, have it furbished first. It has to be made, and then, because they bought everything that was in stock at the plant at the time. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, um, and I'm all done. So this is, I'm the last person to speak. And uh, <laughs> and she's not in here. She just went. Um, I don't know where she's at. She 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 just left. <laughs> yeah, cause she's she's not. She, I think she had two, one or two items. Well, she she left. Yeah, she left. So. Yeah. 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 So we are. So we're she's the, not here. No, she's not. And I, she was in the hallway, but I don't see her anymore. We're we're at the vote. Councilman Pfeiffer, what did you what did you we're say? That is correct. Yeah. I was finishing up with Miss Brown. She had some information she wanted to give to me. So we're now on the vote for the master resolution. Resolution. We finished our two rounds of, of discussion. And Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley is absent. Yeah. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Kenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. The vote is a yes, you all know. The vote is eight yes, zero noes on the master resolution. On the master res resolution. Madam Chair. Councilman Pfeiffer. I make a motion to send 220300 to council. There's a motion on the floor to send item number 220300 to council. Is there a second? Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Councilwoman Worthing. I second that. It has been properly second. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I won't be voting to send this to council. I've had discussion on it, 8.6 million. I believe this council is all over the place. And when I say that, we've got some serious business to do. I've had a discussion of lost revenue, fixing a $15 million projected deficit I, as a council person, I think I make about $22,000 a year. And I don't even want to be a part of 
getting a $300 credit. And no council person sitting up here should want to be a part of it. I alluded to the fact of county commissioners voting themselves money. I'm not voting on nothing that's going to put any money or credit in my pocket with these ARPA funds. And I hear council people eager to vote themselves and others a $300 credit. That $300 ain't going to make or break us. And $8.6 million, close to $10 million, because of problems that the city of Flinton experienced because of the state. I heard one of my colleagues try to act like I don't know what I'm talking about. Tried to frame this as COVID-19 money only. Now this is bigger than COVID-19 money when it comes to the city of Flint. This has to do with the highest water prices in the country. It has to do with folks coming before us telling us to seriously talk about water affordability and this council has not done it. It's a misguided council in my opinion, any and all of them that vote to spend close to $10 million to give active water customers $300 credit. And some of my colleagues is right. The $300 credit in light of no shutoffs for a year or two as it relates to the state and the city does nothing for some. I think it's outrageous that council people is ready to jump and hop on a starting line with whoever and ain't even did their homework on fixing the other aspects of city government. We have a responsibility and a, and a duty to the residents to do certain things. One of them is to fix that projected $15 million deficit, provide police service, public safety, and blight, more so than a $300 credit. We have programs such as RAP and others that we can help people with. I really am surprised at a lot of the direction and the spending the money or lack thereof spending the money from council colleagues. Who invented this? Who created it? Was the ad hoc committee involved? Was certain council members called and lobbied? I'm looking how fast and look at what Mr. Pfeiffer said. He ready. He ready. $300. My constituency want $300. Mine do too, but I got a duty and a responsibility to fix a $15 million deficit. Keep emergency managers out. I know who sit on this council when emergency managers came in. I'm looking at the administration, the lack of honesty and transparency, and I'm looking at the council, $300, $300 a credit, $300. It's so, it's so urgent. People putting the cart before the horse. I'm looking at it. I'm going to talk about it, pass, stall, or fail. It ain't what it appears to be. And the people who fallen for it, it remind me of the old Trojan horse. Some people is being tricked and fooled right here, right now, right here today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Yeah. Councilman Murphy. You Thank have the floor. you. I would like to make an amendment amended motion for um, this resolution to do all things necessary to allow the $300 credit to go 
towards their payment arrangement with an agreement to keep their monthly water bill current and pay a percentage agreed upon by the water department for their past due bill. You want me to read that one more time? Uh-uh. Huh? <laughs> I, want, I want us to narrow it down. I, so you so want to do it to prevent wanna, shutoffs? Correct. Okay, so... What, 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 I, what, what I'm trying to do is we've given them $300 credit. Point of order. What's your point of order? If there's a motion, there's a motion. If there's discussion, there's a discussion. If there's a motion or a discussion of what's going on here. Thank you, Councilman Murphy. Um, I get what you Say I, it again. Let me, I would like to make an amended motion to do all things necessary to allow the $300 credit to go either towards a payment arrangement with the agreement to keep their monthly water bill current and pay a percentage agreed upon by the water department. Okay, is there a second? Madam Chair. Councilwoman Lewis, you second that? I second it. And it's yes. been properly second. Yeah. Thank you. What, what I'm trying to do is the $300 um, will help those that's um, behind in a bill. You have people, the governor and the mayor told people they did a moratorium to stop shutoffs. So some people um, accumulated water, past due water bills up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not sure. So say for instance, and I could give you um, an example, someone that lives in the first ward reached out to me. Their water bill was, I think, 3000 or 4000 some dollars. And they may have a percentage of that. What I do know a of them do in the water department is they make payment arrangements with people. So. If they water bill is six thousand dollars and they need to come up with six hundred, they would um, come up with three hundred. Then this credit would be the other three hundred, which will come up with the six hundred dollar um, ten percent down payment, with the agreement that whoever the resident is that's behind in a water bill will um, keep their bill current moving forward and pay a percentage of they past due. So they may have to pay $50 a month extra. They'll keep their bill current, pay the current bill. It's, it's an agreement. So it ain't that, like, okay, you gonna get this money and then that's gonna be it. You gonna have to agree to keep your current water bill pay on a monthly basis, plus pay 50, 60, 70, I'm not sure, whatever arrangement a monitor them make with them to pay on a past due and then that Therefore, it will allow the water department to start bringing in more in collectibles because right now they're not bringing in a lot in collectibles. And this $300 credit is still considered cash or credit, and we are all win. They won't, we all will prevent shutoffs because we got a lot of people may be facing shutoffs and we'll be helping those who may have been into um, any kind of crisis due to um, COVID. For those residents that is not dealing with a past due, ha that has been paying their water, they will get a $300 credit, and then for the next two or three months, they won't have to um, pay their water bill, and they can use that money towards buying medicine, buying food, utilities, or whatever. And I understand my colleagues say that this is COVID dollars and not really dealing with the water crisis. So for all of us to be able to come up with agreement, and I'm not saying all of my colleagues will support this, I think we all will kind of have some kind of win in supporting this um, $300. So that was my motion and that's my explanation of why I made the amended motion 
to move this to council on Monday. Madam Chair. Are you, are you done? Council Murphy, are you done, sir? Yeah. I'm done. Okay, thank you. Councilman Mays. Yeah, yeah Madam Chair. You know, sometime, and I'm just going to be frank, sometime I'm embarrassed to sit on this particular council. What you say, Ms. Worthy? Ain't that <laughs> you out of order. Madam Chair, she out of order, because when I start saying amen, sister, and messing with her, she ain't going to like it. Now, here she done okay. hollered across the room, amen, brother. Thank you, Councilman. Now, ain't that out of order? Thank you, Councilman Mays. You have the floor. So I want to be out of order three, four times with these same folks as they use their sarcasm and humor and all of that mess. Amen, brother. Just ridiculous. Now I lost my train of thought behind that mess. And she's sitting chewing gum, laughing, that whole, uh, I call it the left or right side of the aisle. It's just a different mentality in this city. I'm sometimes embarrassed on this council. Now he didn't made an amended motion. Don't know the resolution got to include wording of such. Then gave a long explanation and diatribe and think that's how this government worked. I'm tripping. And it ain't the first time I done tripped of what certain council people vote on and do on this council. Just a lack of understanding. Through you to the city attorney, you know how to draw that amendment up. Did you catch it? Well, I, I heard the comments, um, and, and it would be my thought if it would be properly submitted potentially in writing so that the entire full council persons are on the same page as to the exact amendment. Clearly, I can understand that. And it ain't going to be done here on the floor. Through you to Mr. Drazinski, could you approach? <laughs> Mr. Drazinski, could you please approach, sir? Now, as he approached, I'm listening to council people and the administration talking about necessary information on a request form. Now, I want to know why that same necessary information, Mr. Jarzinski, won't be required for all of these active water customers getting $300. Tell me. It's not an application process, so it'll be a credit that's granted by the water department. So you telling me that people can get $300 based upon all of what this administration, including you, and said they need to put down as far as their eligibility. But in this case, individuals can get it, and all of that stuff don't matter. Well, we're not giving them cash, so yes. Oh, you probably wasn't giving them cash if they wanted their roof fixed. I don't think that we was going to give them cash to get their roof fixed. I figured we'd get them money to Habitat for Humanity or something. We ain't even at the point of giving folks money. This is the closest we get to giving them money and or credit and the eligibility don't apply. You say because what, they'll never touch the money? Is that your rationale? It, it, it's not the same thing. Um, this is a direct housing assistance item, so it doesn't have to go through an application process. So it might not be the same thing, but it's the same individuals who I've heard people say that we need to know some details of their income. Ain't their income one of the things that y'all said previously we needed to know? Y 
yes, but in this case, all of the residents are qualified through the fact that they're in or attached to a qualified census tract. So it's an eligible use of the funds. There's no so, income. So the whole city is the qualified census tract. 85%. 85%. So the 15% of the other people, we need to know their income? No, there, there are other qualifying measures that we'll use for that. So if 85% if of the city is in the census tract, why would people stand up here and say on the other request we need to know their income? The more I hear, the more I learn, and the more convoluted it sounds to me. Now, I don't want to jump the gun, but I think people just making stuff up to fit what they want to spend and do for. Because these people stood up before us and said, we need this detailed information. This is government money. Now here you stand and say 85% of the city qualifies because of the census tract. So some of those things that was previously said would be unnecessary from what I gather. I mean, this is getting to be a little much. So did you hear this amendment, Mr. Drozinski, and you figure it's in compliance? I'm going to have to read the resolution after it's completed. In, uh, in other words, it ain't ready to move the council with this amendment. It really is still some committee work. And it ain't just committee work because of this amendment, but you know, some of my colleagues, they full grown now. They moving millions of dollars. Because guess what? The majority of their constituents told them. I've been sitting in this seat for nine years, and the majority of my constituency ain't never told me nothing in the middle of a meeting and a process. That's the first round, Madam Chair. That is the first round. Some of this stuff is just ridiculous and it's embarrassing to be sitting up here as a part of it. This ain't a rational thinking group as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Pfeiffer, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. So this is an amendment to allow the $300 to be used towards Shut off nose, notice payments, correct? Long and short, that's what it's for? Thank you, that's all I have. That was, yes. Anyone else in the first round? Madam Chair. <clears throat> Councilwoman um, Winfrey Carter. Um, now, I do understand um, Councilman Murphy, what, what you're trying to do as far as um, the amendment. However, I still cannot vote on this because of the fact that I want the resolution in hand. You know, we can't, we can't really vote on something that says do all things necessary. Um, in order for this to move forward, we need the resolution in hand that states that. Um, so I'm not, I'm not gonna vote for it. I'm just, I'm just not gonna vote for it. Now, if we can get a resolution brought before us, then maybe so. Because I do wanna help those who have um, outstanding water bills who are, um, who are in danger of um, getting shut off. I would like for their $300, $300 to go towards their, their balance and, and whatever agreement that they make with, the, um, with customer service. But I'm listening to our city attorney as far as needing a resolution, because I already know, when we say do all things necessary, um, it's not taking, it's not taking, um, you know, it's not serious. 
we've made, re we've made uh, motions that said do all things necessary, and I know of a couple of them, and they have not been followed through. So I would like to have a resolution in hand that states this amendment, and then I could probably support this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Councilwoman um, Winfrey Carter. Anyone else in the first round? Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Oh, Ms. Herc, I can see you. Um, you have the floor. Yep, through you to the city attorney. Would you be able to have this resolution language with the amendment should this amendment pass by Friday, or excuse me, by Monday? Well, I'm not sure the resolution, I'm not sure where this resolution is. Is your mic on? Yes. Speak closer, thank you. You gotta maybe scoot up to it. I'm not sure where this resolution originated from in the first place. Um, if we received a request in writing with the exact nature of the amendment, the exact wording of that amendment, then we could certainly put that together. So what I'm hearing you say is that if Mr. Murphy, Murphy, who is the maker of the motion, is able to get that in writing to you, you'll be able to have an amended resolution by Monday? I believe so. Okay. Thank you so much. Council, anyone else? Are you done, Councilman Hart? Um, actually, no. Madam Chair, I'd like, nope, nope. nope. Yep, I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyone else in this first round? Um, after conferring, well, I'll do for the first round, which will make it. Um, and to Councilman, Mur Councilman Murphy, um, according to Robert, if you could submit uh, for clarity and point, point of information. <laughs> when it gets cold in here, uh, if you could submit in writing. Um, what you want, so according to Robert's rules, um, require your amendment and should be submitted when you are the mover in writing so we understand what it is that you're trying to convey. Point of information to you, to you and my colleagues, I just yes. um, typed up a uh, um, resolution, the, what I just wrote, and I submitted it to um, <coughs> Jennifer? Janelle. Janelle, excuse me. Janelle, I just emailed it to Janelle. <laughs> For her to add in the resolution okay. to have it and request it for it to be typed up by Monday. Okay. All right. So, um, with that being said, do you want to continue to move forward on your amendment? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, because you're you're going to she hit <clears throat> she. I can't eat honey. She can't do honey and lemon. I can't. I'm allergic to honey. She can't use that. So let's go on to the second round. Um, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I just read a memo about using all these devices in a meeting from the legal department, people texting and emailing in an, what should be an open meeting. And there's a rule that any council person can request a motion to be in writing. Not the amendment, but the motion. And I'm requesting that. Because what's going on here is a little much for me. <laughs> Through you, Madam Chair, to Amanda. Amanda, can you approach? Because this council do what they choose to do and they use rationale publicly when they choose to use rationale. Amanda, shed some light on what you're hearing and why you would be for or against it if you take a position. Um, well, I've already done some preliminary work if this does pass. Um, on this, in discussions with BSNA, to how to, you know, effectuate this the most efficient way, and I mean it's going to be, it's going to be tedious, and once it does pass, say if it passes with the regular resolution, that's you know the first res, not you know, the alternative one, um, it's going to take a couple three weeks after it's approved before we can actually get it on everyone's account. Now, under the policy 
that I had something to do with. The policy says in order to avoid shut off, you pay 10% of your delinquency in your current. Correct. If a delinquency was 3,800, 10% would be $380. Yes. And the current bill might average $100. Right. So $300 wouldn't keep under the current policy somebody from getting cut off. It would just reduce that 380 down. It would right. reduce it, but it wouldn't get them, right. keep them from being cut off. Right. If they had a $2,000 delinquency and their current bill was 100, 300 could possibly get them from being cut off for how long? Well, it just depends on how, I mean, how often I'm able to, you know, go through all the cycles. Because right now, they could I'm get able cut to do... off the next month. Right. Technically, yes. technically, I mean, we would be able to do that. But right now, I have there's enough staff at Water Service Center. I'm able to go through all the cycles in one month. Let me say this: I can remember sitting in that committee room developing the policy of 10 percent and current. I want to be a little more liberal, if you recall. Mm -hmm. And I want to give people 30 days, because most of the seniors and others get paid the first of the month. I remember it like it was yesterday. This money, 8600300 dollars to each resident, ain't the solution here. The solution has to do when you understand and develop policy as a council to avoid people from getting shut off. Who ain't been shut off for a year or two, then all of a sudden abruptly they facing shut offs because somebody in the administration and this council won't develop the proper policy. The policy is different from a $300 credit. And I think that's what this young council is missing. And I don't care if they get mad. I can call them young, new, learned. It took me nine years to learn some stuff. I didn't learn all this stuff overnight. So I done got past folks getting upset, mad, and you right, Ms. Winfrey Cotter, whoever said it, when they say do all things necessary, I've seen a case where it's supposed to be a public hearing noticed. They voted on a resolution to do all things necessary and didn't notice the public hearing before they took the action. What? And you got a misguided legal department being directed under Attorney Kim. It just ain't no doubt in my mind what's going on here in the city. I was very disappointed when I seen you amount to file a charge, a complaint against Mr. Pfeiffer. I was upset when the purchasing director and I reviewed the tape, filed a complaint on Ms. Burns. It didn't surprise me Whittigan filing one on me. Point of order. What's your point of order? He's not germane to the motion on the floor. It is germane to me. When you're dealing with department heads and treasurers communicating with this council and good information, I believe you in on it too. Now you can say that ain't germane, but whenever you try to block my freedom of speech and my factual communication, I got a major problem with you. And you're doing it repeatedly. We used to say, in plain terms, you're showing you're behind. And it's getting to be a little ridiculous. Mr. Murphy, you ain't making points with the people who I know. You might be making uh, some points with some folks you know, but you ain't making points with the people who I know. Now, that's germane to me. 
and you're doing it repeatedly. You are a distraction from the business of the city as far as I'm concerned. I'm Madam Chair, um, Amanda, I've never had a problem communicating with you. And I'm surprised that a department head such as Whittigan, you have complaints deriving from that. And then it's in the news. And I believe Mr. Neely know about it. I believe it was orchestrated. Mr. Um, Smith turned them over to the proper place. They wasn't even proper, in my opinion, going to Mr. Smith. And I don't care what Mr. Murphy say, I will continue to bring it out. And I hope folks ain't bullying and harassing in these departments, because I smell a rat. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Is anyone else in the second round? Madam Chair. Councilman Pfeiffer. Thank you. Yeah, a rat. M Mr. Mays, you are 100% correct. It was coordinated. Beg your pardon. So you're 100% correct. It was coordinated. Um, back to the water thing. We can, we can have policy all we want. No policy is going to fix somebody that doesn't want to pay their bill. If their bill is over $3,000 and their monthly charge is $100, that means they haven't paid in three years. No policy is going to fix that. So we can, I think the policy we have intact is a good one. We just have to execute it. And if we have to use these $300 to maybe stimulate that so that we can go down that path, then so be it. Let's do it. But uh, no policies. If they're not going to pay in three years, no policy is going to fix that. We've got to just implement and follow through on the policy we have. That's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Pfeiffer. <clears throat> Anyone else in the second round? You can. You have not spoken, Councilman Murphy. I haven't spoken in the second round. You have not. Yeah. Okay. So um, I agree with you on. They may not pay, but you also got to remember that the governor and the mayor um, did a moratorium on no shutoffs. So that being for a year or two, some people just chose not to pay. Was, did it make it right? No. Um, and this $300, this amended motion, they don't have to buy into it. So if, say for instance, you come and say, um, I don't want to buy into the $300 towards my back pay because I'm not willing to keep my water bill current and make arrangements on my past due then this program ain't for them. So we're not saying that this amended motion is going to be for everybody. It's just another option for those who may feel that they want to go into it. So us approving this motion don't mean that everybody automatically get $300 towards they pass due. They have to actually go to the water department and make arrangements, and maybe they need to sign an agreement that they willing to pay. It ain't nothing be like, okay, we just go, you know, this is something, it gotta be a mutual agreement between the resident and um, the water department. So I'm not sure that it, everybody gonna wanna buy into it, because like you said, if they ain't been paying, they probably ain't gonna pay. So you still go be facing the shutoff, but th this can help those who may be willing to try to make payment arrangements for um, they pass due. And I did send a resolution, a draft resolution to um, Janelle. Janelle. And since I've been on council, this is not our first time ever making an amendment on the floor without having a draft resolution here where we approved it and they prepared it and had it ready by Monday. But if that's the rules and that's the guidelines we want to go by now, when we get ready to be making amended motions on other things, I'm going to remember this. Thank you. Madam Thank Chair. You. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, hold on, you spoke in the second In the round. first round. No. It was only one round. 
I started it off on the amended motion. On the amended motion, we had the first round, which was um, Mr. Murphy began it. Then it was you, then Pfeiffer, then Councilman Murphy Carter. And so you spoke again on the first one, and then Pfeiffer, and then Councilman Murphy. So we are in the second round. And I get to speak in the second round? You spoke already. I have been speaking already as the first speaker. I'm, I'm not sure of that, Madam Chair. I, I'll confer with Bob. She said, can you say it into the, um, for the record? That is, what I, that, is, that is what I have as well. So do you, did you speak in the first round, Ms. Um, Burns? I did not speak. I, I spoke, I did not. First round was Mr. Murphy first, then you, Councilman Mays, then Pfeiffer, then Winfrey Carter. Was that on the amended motion? It's on the amended motion, yes. And then in the second round. You were the first person. Then Councilman Pfeiffer spoke briefly, and then Councilman Murphy. Well, I played by the rules, but I didn't really realize I had spoken in the um, second round. For the amended motion. Um, is there anyone else for the second round for the amended motion? Is anyone else for the second? I want to just for some clarity. Um, with the speaking with our city attorney, you did, Councilman Murphy, send over um, a draft of the language because I think it needs some, <laughs> it needs some, some clarity and we confirm with the legal with our legal attorney. With our attorney, he I did state to have it. He did state that. We need to make sure that the mover of the motion, which would be you, to provide that, and you did. So we are now done with the second round of the amended motion. Madam Clerk, roll call on the amended motion to do all things necessary to amend the $300 or allow the $300 to be used for assistance with the payment program. That's what you said. That's, that's that's, okay. That is something. Yep. Madam Clerk, roll call. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? No. <laughs> Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? Um, yes. Ms. Erkin Roder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. The vote is uh, six yes, three no. The vote is six yes, three no. Madam Chair. Councilman Pfeiffer. I make a motion to send 220300.1 to Council. There's a motion on the floor to send 220. <clears throat> Councilman Pfeiffer, can you state that one again? That's the motion. Last one. Point of order, Madam Chair. Point of order. What, what, what's your point of order? I asked for a motion under the rules to be put in writing. Was that ignored? And I would ask that you check the rules based upon that request. Whether it was the first or second round, I made it. Councilman Mays, was that the request to be put in writing for? You're not talking about, you're talking about your request, not Councilman Murphy's. I already know it's in the rules. And y'all want to play the rule game, but you want to ignore that. No, we're, we're not ignoring that. Okay, well, let's see what you do with it. And we're going to use it a whole lot more. Because I don't believe do that I spoke like what you do done. Have and, and I know that rule is there, and I requested it. Yes, I have the language, and we'll have that resolution ready for Monday. That wasn't the resolution that I'm referring to. I'm referring to a motion 
Now, if you want to peruse the council rules, I can help you. Council Mays, you made a request to me. That the motion be put in writing. Which was to have, can I see yours? Now, y'all might not know the use rule, but it's shown up 100% there. Point of information. Um, to um, Councilman Mays, put it in writing and I it point, to Janelle. And point of order. I'm sorry, Councilman Mays, your mic is, your breathing is. That's my mic. No, that's Councilman Mays' mic. No, it ain't. Mine was down. <laughs> yeah. point, through you to the speaker, I. Um, Put it in writing and I submitted it to Janelle. C correct. Um, I am looking at it right now. It, it has been put in writing, yours, and it has been. Um, do you need me to read it out to you? Uh, it is, says, I respect requesting a resolution to be drafted. That includes. Um, I know, right? Point of order, Madam Chair. Y'all looking at something he forwarded in a resolution. You missing the rule that says that a council person can request a motion be put in writing. That's what I'm directing your attention okay, so to. You and if y'all want to continue to play the rule game, it'll be a lot of more requests for a lot of more motions in writing until that rule is changed. I'm sorry, Mr. Mays, I don't understand because I have a copy of what- Davina, can you bring me the council rules? I have what Mr. Murphy is requesting. Well, if you bring them to me, I'll show it to you. Because y'all act like it's so hard to find. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I bet you I'm gonna be right. Point of order. What's your point? I do believe that there is a motion on the floor that has not been asked for a second. Thank you. And I'm going to ask that that one be put in right. Y'all running us down a slippery slope with these rules. Okay. You can frown all you want to, Mr. Murphy. The rules is the rules. Point, point of information. Okay, Davina no, is never bringing. Mind. I would, you withdraw. Davina is bringing the council rules. So it'll be, she went to grab them. I do not have mine with me. Madam. So she did go and so grab. before we vote on this one, I'm going to ask again that it be put in writing. Madam Chair. So and that we're going to run that slippery slope all because y'all want to play the rule game and the all pains necessary game and point, didn't have a point of order. hearing I'll when you removed me and they want to play the attorney you. Kim game. Okay. Count. Councilwoman Herkenroder. I would like to second the motion that's on the floor. It's been seconded for the motion to send item number 2203. Point of order, Chair. Madam Chair. What? I'm asking that it be put in writing. You, you did that. Under Madam the rule that I'm waiting that. for the thing. And we are waiting for that. Yeah. Councilman Murphy had a point of order first. Council, did you withdraw yours? No, yeah, I withdraw mine because she did, yeah. I call the question. Councilman Worthy has called the question, which is in item number 220300 to council. Point of order, Madam Wait. Chair. Have you ruled on whether I've got a legitimate point of order We've while they steady howling? They want to play the rude game. Uh, Madam Chair, I called the question. I, I think we need to go to, to a second. We're in a point of order, Madam Chair. His point of order has already been answered. And we are in a meeting. Unless she's given if he wants the secretary to go order. type something up for him right now, she he can order. go it's out and do that. a point of order, and she's steady Hold running him out. It's a point of order on the floor. He's finishing up, Miss Worthing. He, he's going to have us sit here while you're going to wait Why for don't you warn her. Warn her and then so point of order. Days. I'll point of order. What is your point of order? Who do she think she talks My to point of order is that you need to rule woman, on his. Excuse me. excuse me. What is your point of order? Well, 
are you going to allow Mr. Mays to stop this meeting We're to, not, you've ahead, stopped this meeting. Go ahead and finish up with, Janelle had a question she did not understand. So for clarity, and she's with her with the deputy clerk, so that we can move past this. Janelle, do you and Davina, the section that he's looking for, because I know you said you didn't Point. understand what he was stating. Have you ever seen it, Davina? You can ask that it be put in writing the motion. No, it's in um, council room. Okay, so Councilman Mays. I'm sorry, I don't understand. So then... Do that. Okay, then we can move. Right. So, Madam Chair, you haven't ruled on that, have you? I, no, I have not. Right. We about ready to find it. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Mays, you have got. Okay. Here it is. I think it's 8.2. No motion shall, no motion may be debated by council until it has been stated by the presiding officer and it must be reduced to writing if requested by the presiding officer or any council person. That's rule 8.2. And I'm any council person. And that's what I'm asking you to rule on. So you want us to put, Councilman Murphy's was put into writing. Madam Chair, so you want to put a motion. That, you talking about a resolution, he said on the record, he sent a, a email of a resolution. You missing my request for motions. No, I'm That's not, different I'm not, I'm from a missing, resolution. I'm trying to get clarity, Councilman okay. Mays, because you're talking the city attorney and then also Janelle. And at this point, everyone's kind of confused. We need to have clarity. So with 8.2, can you... Can you say it to everyone? Because he's got everyone confused. If you could put it on the record. Point of information. What's your point of information? Do the plain language of the rule clarify for you motion versus a resolution? I mean, I was asking for the motion to be put in writing. That's way different from him saying on the record he sent language to Janelle about the resolution. That's what, that's what I was just confirmed with him about. And he's getting ready to speak so that everyone will be on the same page because there's a consensus that everyone isn't on the same page. Thank you. It's my understanding that Councilman Mays is asking for. It's my understanding that Councilman Mays is asking for the motion to amend the resolution itself to be placed into writing. That's what I asked not just the amended resolution itself. That is correct. And see, when I ask that, and when I'm ignored by my colleagues who want to be the stickler of the goofy rules, the rules is goofy. I've appointed a committee to fix them and change it, but I know them. And so when I call a point of order and ask the chair to rule, it could be on that motion or any other motion. It can bog stuff down. Because I'll ask that all of them be put in writing because of the way that this body is moving. It's disrespectful. You letting her sit over there and disrespect. Yeah, brother. Point. You know, that pisses me off. Point of information. Yeah. There's certain things happening what's that's your, pissing me off. What's your point of information? Through, your, um, through you to the speaker in the first ward, the amended motion that I put in writing 
is the same resolution verbatim from resolution 220300 addressing the water bill. So I took that resolution that the appropriate city officials upon city council's approval are Put in order, Madam Chair. The record speaks for itself. He said he sent the um, resolution stuff to Janelle. Now all of a sudden I've called this out. He want to change what the record states. I said on the record I wanted the motion to be put in writing. And we'll continue to say it because it's a standing rule. It's a difference between what he sent and said on the record he sent to Janelle for some future purposes to do all things necessary. But this council didn't know, this new council, this smart council, the one that tried to railroad me didn't know point that of, any council person could ask to have a motion put in writing. Point, What's your point of information? I was trying to clarify the information to um, clarify what Councilman Mays was saying. But as I was reading to clarify with my colleagues what I put in writing, um, he, he cut me off. So I wasn't able to finish my point of information. Please finish. Thank you very much. And there is some clarity speaking with attorney. Um, um, has, has it full clarity? And you might, you want him to, okay. can you share that? It's my understanding what the Councilman Mays is looking for is a writing that essentially says Councilman Murphy moves to amend resolution 220300 to read as follows, which then it would state the completely amended resolution language of 220300. That's my understanding of what Councilman Mays is looking for. You're 100% right. And based upon the convolutedness in my request, it should be honored as the rules. Um, and it won't be the last time I use the rules. What's your point of order? Mr. Murphy was the one who had the floor with the point of information. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Murphy. Thank you so very much. And thank you so much, attorney, for clarifying what I was trying to clarify in my um, point of information. Back to what I submitted to Janelle in writing is the same resolution. The intent of requesting it in writing by the presiding officer or the council person ain't for something in the future. <clears throat> it's for me. Thank you. Kevin. It ain't for Janelle. I think he missing the whole point, and whatever Miss Herkin wrote or said, she missing it too. It. I had the right to request it. I did that. Okay, thank you, Council Murphy. You have the floor. Thank you so much. Who's going to write so this, it? I don't um, know. The same resolution that we are reading right here is the same resolution that I submitted in writing. I did not change anything on here. Only thing I added on here was the payment. Um, point of program. order, Madam Chair. What's your point He's of order? He's still arguing about the resolution. We ain't at the resolution, we at the motion. And that's what I think he's missing. I don't know how we can try to get him to understand it. Point but he's steady talking about the resolution and me and the attorney is talking about the point motion. Order. He out of order. To just clarify, because I think some colleagues may be a bit confused, we're actually on a motion to call the question, which has yet to be seconded. And that was, was on. The, the call the question was? It was. No, we had to. No, call the question was not. Call point of order, Madam seconded. Chair. What's your point of order? When they made the motion to move this to council, the point one, Piper, I asked it be put in writing. Same rule. You can't ignore these rules over and over. Miss Worthing hollered out, call for the question out of order. Miss Herkenroder, who want to be the president so bad, I guess, couldn't get but four votes. Here she went in. I've said it twice. I want the motion Mr. Murphy made put in writing. I got that right. I said I want the motion that Pfeiffer made on the point one put in writing. 
and the chair seemed to be ignoring that rule. I'm not ignoring it. You keep pointing for Well, then I'm asking for him to be put in writing and Ed given to me. Excuse me, Councilman Mays. As we have stated, when the attorney provided the uh, clarity for it, which you agreed and you nodded to, that that's what you were stating. Councilman Murphy has been interrupted probably, I don't know how many times, to where he had still had the floor. And so he had needed, and I don't even know if he's finished yet, because he was interrupted several times. Um, Attorney Cups did state what you, what you wanted for clarity, that you wanted the motion in writing. He did state that, and you did agree to I'm that. A bunch of them have been right since they want to play the game. And that's where. And, then, and my point of information is who going to write them and give them to me? You have my request. We haven't gotten that far because everyone, okay. everyone has a point of information and a point no. of order. No, my, uh, my uh, mo motion. Uh, it was a call. You called yes, a that's a privileged motion. Oh, yours was a call for. <clears throat> I need to get some water because I'm done with it. Um, going to do? And I can't have the cough drops. There's a cough. If you Speak please. please. Are you done? Councilor Murphy, were you done? Oh. So there's a call. There's a call for the question, which is. Point of order, Madam Chair. What is your point of order? If you read 8.2, it say no motion may be debated until, and then it proceeds with that. That's why people missing the point. When I make that request, everything stop until it's done. You can't continue with debate and discussion and move on like I'm an idiot. You might think I'm an idiot, but I'm not. I know these rules. They knew, they don't. I appointed them to change the goofy rules. They didn't. Now I'm showing them something. It's a demonstration. Councilman Mays, rule 16.1 states any council person may move to vote. My voice isn't gonna make it through this. Could you read that for me, please? Yeah, it must be. Yeah, put no, we're on 16.1. Okay, let's see what he's saying based on 8.2. At the chair's request, Rule 16.1 states, any Let me go to 16.1, if I may. Okay, I'm there. Uh, rule 16.1 states, any council person may move to vote immediately. If the motion is supported, debate will cease immediately. A two-thirds vote is required for the motion to vote immediately to carry. Okay, let's go back to 8.2. Okay. You would have to agree, Madam Chair. Point of you, order. If I may, What's Madam point Chair. point of order? We, we still need to call for the second, for the call to question. The discussion in between is, is not in order. Point of order, Madam Chair. What's your point of order? 8.2, no motion may be debated by the council until it has been stated by the presiding chair, and it must be reduced to writing if requested by the presiding officer or any council person. In other words, you can't proceed if a council person requests it be reduced in writing. Point of order. It ain't no way around it. Mr. Mays is out of order. As chair, you can say that he's out of order. He's interrupting uh, our call to question. You're allowing it. We'd like to move on. Point of Chair. order. You tell it me. Well, I'm just asking. You might have to look at the record. I do it all the time. But are you telling me she called for the question before I asked for it to be reduced to writing? Madam Chair, I'd like to second the motion. That's not true. That was the occurrence of events According when Piper to said. 16.1. And it states that 
So we are now calling for the second, and it's been properly second by Councilwoman Hurricane Roeder. Miss Madam Chair, I might not appeal you, but you did wrong point of order. The, the order was I asked when Pfeiffer said he moved for the point one, I said I want it in writing. I had already been ignored on Mr. Murphy's point request in writing. Point of order. What's I'm in the middle of a point of yeah, order. It's an Madam invalid Chair. point of order, and he's taking the floor. Thank you, Councilman Mays. May yeah. I continue with my point of order? Because when I say point of order, all talking should cease, including <laughs> points of orders. Oh. And so if this talking don't cease, he thinks it's funny. Can but we plan the rule game. Order? I call the point of order. Can you finish your she point didn't of order? cease. She called the point of order when I was talking. She's but really not. technically out of order. So my point of order is that I asked for even Pfeiffer's motion to be put in writing before she called for the question. According again to I know that's a fact. 16.1 with the city attorney. He's given his legal opinion. We are now on the vote. We are now on the, the vote. For the call of the question, Madam Chair. Roll call. Point of order, Madam Chair. We're on the roll call. Can I have the right to appeal your decision. You understand that any call. decision of the chair can I be have, appealed. It might not get a second, but my point of order I had, is I have the right I to appeal already, the decision of the chair. Already call for roll call before you did the point. That's of the order. decision I'm appealing. You, you go. You're so you get. Roll call. Go ahead. You getting that correct? Yeah. That you That's not an appeal, correct. whether it's second or you, not. Don't get order, that Madam corrupt Chair. caught up in this mess, man. Mr. Mace has consistently misused privileged information, excuse me, privileged motions to obtain the floor and has consistently argued with you, the city attorney, and other members of this council. I'm requesting that you give him a warning. Thank you. He's leaving. Let's go. Roll call, please. Are you, Matt? Excuse No, I'm not. He's gone. Okay. He's out of the so, part, so, sorry, point of information. Right. To clarify, Council because. Mays, please. To clarify, because we know. When you say he's gone, can you. To clarify, because we know. When you say he's gone, can you elaborate on what that means? He's left the meeting and won't be returned. He's, he's left the meeting entirely. He did not ask for permission. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify. That's. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, what are we voting about? We are voting on the call for the question. question. Okay. On the point one, yes, for the amended motion to do all things necessary. No, wait, wait, call. wait a minute. Just call. Yep, call for the question. Okay, Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Priestley. Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Ms. Burns. Yes. Ms. Herkenroder. Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer. Yes. Ms. Worthing. Yes. Ms. Lewis is absent. Okay. The vote is uh, seven yes, zero no. Okay. We'll call for the question. The point one. I'm sorry. Seven yes, zero no. I'm sorry. Seven yes, zero no. Call for the question. For the call for the question. Madam Clerk, we want to roll call, which would be. <sighs> Moving point one to council. <laughs> which would be the point one to move to motion to amend to do all things necessary to amend the $300. No. The, the motion is to send 220300.1 to, to council. So, thank yep. you. Just to clarify, sorry. We've had a lot going on. Thank you. To send to council. Ms. Priestley? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. The vote is uh, five yes, three no. Five yes, three no. It will be sent to council. Madam Chair. Councilman Pfeiffer. I make a motion to send 220347 to council. There's a motion on the floor to send item number 22347 to council. 
Is it Councilwoman Worthing? I you? second that. It has been properly seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, well, let me talk because she's about to call the question on us. <laughs> uh, the the three hundred thousand dollars. Can someone come to um, Clyde Edwards or um, Lottie? Can someone come and speak on this three hundred thousand dollars for Brennan Center, Brennan Senior Center, and Hasselbrain Senior Center? Um, let me read the resolution resolving that the appropriate city officials upon city council's approvals are authorized to do all things necessary to make funding available for capital improvements to the Brennan Center, Senior Center and the Hasselbrain Senior Center. Um, one of the questions that, um, well, let me, I'll do you, Chair, to Whitakin. Could you explain? Um, what this three hundred thousand dollars is to um, do Pacific? What kind of projects? So th this uh, will go with in your grants agenda. You see resolution two two zero three five four and five five in the grants agenda. That's the grants from Mott College to do improvements to the two senior centers. <clears throat> this will leverage those dollars and go with those grants to work on specifically, there's roof repairs, uh, electrical needs, mechanical plumbing, fire alarm systems. Uh, those quotes were obtained in October of 2021. Uh, I believe our maintenance department worked on that as well. To get quotes for these repairs, a request was made, and this will help to make sure we get everything, the full cost taken care of. And, and um, I don't know. He's, he's, I'm not. He needs to finish that conversation. Okay. Count. Yeah, you need to finish. I'm, I'm aware. Okay. So, um, the, the, one of the questions uh, I Council have. Council Mays, are you taking your seat again? I don't even know what you said. You, you left the meeting, sir, without permission. Say what? You left the seat without permission. Oh, right you telling me I didn't ask you to leave? You did not, sir. Oh, okay. What I'm, you want to let me back in or not? I'm asking you, are you returning to your seat? Beg your pardon? I really can't hear you. You're losing your voice. I, I am. Are you returning to your seat? Yeah. Would you like to? Yeah. I'm going to allow you to return to your seat, sir. But I'm asking that... I'm asking that you please be respectful so we can finish the meeting. I think I understood what you said. Go ahead. Um, the, the reason why I asked about these Pacific dollars is because Haskell Community Center, which is in its second ward, um, they received, I remember the young lady came before city council they received some grant funding, some CDBG dollars, I believe, that where the contract has not been um, um, awarded or it has been awarded. They just haven't done the things. And I, my question to you guys is why didn't you guys this, um, consider um, bringing a resolution to include Haskell Community Center because that center is much needed for the second war and for this community. So was that in your consideration? Why it yeah. was or why it wasn't? So in the, in the ARPA plan, there is funding set aside for all community centers. The reason why the, these two senior centers were specifically chosen and brought forward was just because they tie to another grant that we're asking you to accept in your later, uh, later tonight in your grants packet. So since they were tie bar together, we brought them at the same time versus, you know, I could have done one resolution for all senior centers, but this, these, these two specifically tie to a grant we're receiving and asking you to accept. So you guys are planning on bringing something 
to get Haskell Community Center back up and running? We are, yeah, there is, there is funds that we, are, we have set aside to request for improvements to parks and community centers, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. That's yeah. all I wanted to know. Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm going to assume that we own 220347 and that a motion has been made. Is that a proper assumption? According to Mr. Piper's thumbs up, it is. And so we in discussion, probably on the first round on a motion. We Madam the Chair, I, you ain't got to worry about me in the rest of this meeting, you or the council. This city has taught me tonight, and it ain't just been tonight, that this council have fed into the corruption of this administration. Clearly, the city attorney read the rule that I can request a motion being right. This council bent over backwards not to follow that rule. I was in court the other day on a resolution to do all things necessary to remove the president. And point, all point things of, necessary include. What's your point of order? His case being in the court has nothing to do with the motion that's at hand. He's not germane to the topic. Thank you, Pussy. If I may continue, I'm so tired of that one, I don't know what to do. He ain't the most intelligent bird that Adams heard on this council. And I'm getting tired of him steady, publicly Councilman, trying Councilman to Mays. denounce what I say. So I've got the floor. Councilman and when he Hold on. Can you please refrain from personal attacks? If, by calling him a bird. Well, he's not the most intelligent yeah, yeah. human being. Point of order. Okay. Councilman Murphy. My IQ level has nothing to do with this motion. His opinion or what he think about me is not germane to the motion. He's out of order Councilman, for the second time. Councilman Mays, I am going to give you a warning. Met, Madam Chair, I have the right to criticize government, and Mr. Murphy is a part of that. He's not the most intelligent human being council. that I've heard council. on point this council come out whether I'm German. Point of order. Point of order. For the third time, my IQ level has nothing to do with the motion that has been made. He is not germane to the topic. He has came to the meeting again, and he is stating his opinion based on what he think about us as individual and is not pertaining to the motion. And some of us want to get the work done because we have other committees to deal with. Madam Chair, I can Thank say you. whether or not I council, believe a council on. person council vote Mays, or... Hold on, because he did a point of what I need to rule on that. Um, you cannot give personal tax, sir. You cannot do that. And referring to someone's, calling them a less than or an intelligent bird, we cannot do that. Okay. So, well, I'm going to probably continue to refer to colleagues' knowledge and intelligence on issues. And this issue before us, I have the right to speak on it. And when I speak on it and I ask for latitude to make my point and Mr. Murphy cuts me off, before I make my point and you allow it. My point is this. My point is I'm not going to sit in the middle of corruption and that the corruption then trickled from the administration up to this council. And point what I mean order, by that. Point of order. What's your point of order? This motion is on a resolution dealing with um, Haskell Community Center and the Brennan Center. My colleagues is continually to um, not be germane to the motion that's on the floor. Rather, his alleged allegations of the administration being corrupt and the city council being corrupt has nothing to do with the motion on the floor. And some of us want to get the work done. Thank you, Councilman. He is 
out of order for Thank the fifth you. And, time. And that's taken the floor too. So that's that also. Council Mays, I need you to stay germane to the topic, please. And Beg your pardon. I, we really just want to get out of here at this point. I and can't this, understand what you're saying. Can you not hear me? I can hear you, but I'm trying to make sure I understand what you're saying. Please, please continue and please stay germane to the topic. That's what I'm trying Thank to do. You. So whenever you make a point, you can lay a foundation. And as I make a point on the spending of these opera funds, I really don't appreciate Mr. Murphy trying to read my mind. <clears throat> my point that I'm making, why I'm going to oppose this and why I'm going to get up and leave this meeting, because in my opinion, I don't have to sit in the middle of corruption and a break in the rules in a council meeting. I don't have to sit and listen to Ms. Worthy say, brother, and all of that old mess. I don't have to listen to Mr. Murphy because of his lack of intelligence of what germane and relevant mean. Interrupt me repeatedly. Point of order. I don't have to listen and sit in a council. What's your point of order? Not only is Mr. Mays continuously disrespecting colleagues by throwing around accusations, he's also not stopping when other members call for points of order, and he is still, based off of your warning, your request, I think, for the second time to stay germane, has not stayed germane to the topic. You've given him a warning. I'd request that you ask him to leave. I'm not going to ask him to leave, Ms. Herkenroder. I'm not at this point. Can you please wrap up, Mr. May? Yeah, ma Madam Chair, I get five minutes to speak on my opposition or support for a motion. And I get it to include what the majority of my colleagues vote on. I even get to include the application and the use of rules as it relates to asking that a motion be put in writing. I don't care if you got five or more council people that vote contrary to the law and the rules. It doesn't bother me none. That's the corruption that I'm referring to. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Smith, can you approach? And then I'm going to turn this over to y'all. And then I'm going to pledge to clean out the corruption from the administration to the city council. I'm going to pledge that tonight. Because cities wasn't meant to run this way. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Smith, you received a complaint from Mr. Whittigan, Mr. Trujillo, and the purchasing director, correct? That is correct. I called you about those complaints, correct? That is correct. And you say you had forwarded them to the Ethics and Accountability Board, correct? And unbusman, correct. Because they were maybe misplaced by coming to you and your department somewhat? Well, all complaints from employees will come to Human Resource. Say that again. All complaints from employees will come to Human Resources. But a complaint on the city council takes a different nature than other complaints of employees. Wouldn't that be a fair statement? In this case, it, it's something that HR could not handle, so I forwarded it to Unbuzzman and Ethics and Accountability Board. And I requested that you have some type of staff meeting with Whittigan, Mr. Neely, the city attorney, and so forth and so on, correct? Regarding this matter, yes. Yeah, because it's getting to be a little much. Now, Madam Chair, if I may, when it comes to me coming to council meetings, handicap dealing, thank you, Mr. Smith, handicap dealing with Mr. Whittigan there and the yeah. politics of this corruptionness, when I ask that the rules be followed, and I'll sit and wait to the second yeah. round before I leave, Ariel because I'm going to make my point of why I'm going to refuse to participate on a council and an administration Can you wrap that up, seem to be Mays? corrupt. I'll wrap up for the first round. Wow. Anyone else in the first round? Madam Chair. Councilwoman Worthing. To whoever can answer any questions about this through the chair. Um, did Brennan Senior Center and Hasselbring um, apply for CDBG funds? What did you guys come up with that? You 
RL. RL, Mr. Mitchell. Point of information. Yeah, they're, they're, Point they're, information. they're on their way. Councilman Murphy. Through you to the speaker, they did. I, I believe they did, but we didn't award them now. Because you remember, I tried to make a motion to add some money to them, but we never did. So they did, but they didn't receive any. But thank you. Um, why didn't they get the money then? Um, I'd have to look at the applications and the comments from the CWAC. Um, and I, I don't know that information offhand. So they were rewarded, but they aren't going to get that money. No, I think what Councilman Murphy is saying is that they were not recommended for funding. Oh, they applied, they applied but were but not did recommended not. for exactly. funding. Do you, and you don't know why they didn't recommend I'd it for funding? I'd have to funding. look at comments to see. Okay. Uh, I'm not, based on that, I'm not going to pass this at this time. I don't know if someone wants to make a motion to delay it, but I want to know why. Because this has happened before where they haven't done things correctly or, um, you know, when they've applied or it's, there's been some issues with the senior centers not getting it together. And before I approve this money, I want to make sure I know why they denied it. So I myself am uncomfortable putting this through right now. But my question too is to administration because the south side doesn't have a senior center. The eighth and ninth wards, seventh ward, I don't know what it does. So we need one. <laughs> And I would like to see some of this ARPA funding going through to something like that. And the 8th and 9th share a border. We could put one right on the south side, like Fenton or Saginaw Road. Um, I think there used to be one. I'm not positive. Point of information, you guys have the McKinley Center that they have been working on, which right. is off of, um, it's in the back, off by Thread Lake. So they're working on it right now? They reply, applied for funding, am I correct, Suzanne? Um, um, that was a, there was a resolution that I think was actually dropped by this council oh. um, approximately a month ago to award funding for DTS construction for completion of the McKinley Center, repairs at the McKinley Center. So yes, that is a center that is being worked on right now. It's been um, worked on. There was a question from Councilwoman Burns regarding insurance proceeds that both um, CFO Whittigan and I spoke to, um, and that is a resolution that we will be bringing back to council um, because, yes, you do have a, a community center in your ward, and it is something that we would like to complete so that you can have activities um, functioning at that center. Thank you. That's disappointing to hear that it was dropped, but uh, I, don't, I must have been ill or something at that meeting. I don't remember that particular vote. Um, so if that's brought back, that's good, because my constituents did mention that, and they want that to, ha you know, to, to be thriving again. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not going to approve this as of yet, just until I, I see the comments from the CDBG um, committee. Um, doesn't mean that I won't vote on it after that. I just want to cover all the bases and see why it was denied. Thank you. And I just want to say one more thing. This is completely separate from CDBG. I know you know that, but you know the way it's administered, the, the funding, the proposed uses that ha they've been developed um, you know, with, a, with the, the needs of the building identified, and that's something completely separate from their CDBG application. So I can provide you the information yeah. to the extent that I have it for the CWAC. Um, but I just want to be clear that they're completely different. And also, my recollection is that the applications were for a very small amount, um, I think $25,000. These are the senior center, the centers in question um, need many more repairs than that. So this work, um, and it leverages the CS Map Foundation, is really important to get them functioning. So I, I appreciate you, and we can get that information to you but I just want to be clear that they're two, two completely separate issues. I can vote for it to go to council, and then once I review the materials and talk to some um, people about it, then maybe, um, you know, I'll change my mind. <laughs> Thank you. Madam Chair. Council on Priestley. Through you to Vladi. <laughs> Now there's grants on the um, to be accepted from the grant on the grants committee. Are those dependent on these monies? Uh, the the combination of the two 
would um, meet the budget needed for the repairs at both of the senior citizen centers. Okay, but so because of uh, um, Ms. Worthing's question, I didn't know if we didn't send this to council, if that would jeopardize the funding from the Mott Foundation. I don't believe so. Uh, it didn't look like it when I read the when yeah, I read the I, grant. I so I don't believe so, but they they would like to to grant this money prior to the end of this calendar year. Okay, thank you very much. That was my question. Thank you, Madam hey, Chair, Councilwoman Lewis. Okay, so um, so just want to um, ask this question through you to Lottie again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it, it looks like you all are asking for $300,000 from the ARPA funds. And so will that be split on um, 150 per center? Yes, ma'am. All right, and so will this be um, all of the money that these buildings will receive from the ARPA funds? Uh, it, it's, it's possible. Okay. It, yeah, and we know specifically, uh, um, we, we went through, did walkthroughs of the, the buildings back in October of 21. And so, um, again, the two, the 150 that we're requesting from ARPA plus the money that we're receiving granted from CS Mott Foundation um, will we'll meet the budget of the uh, estimate of repairs done at that time. So if there are additional needs, you know, they can be discussed, but this is, this is what we are, um, are presenting today. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Ferguson, <laughs> don't leave yet. <it. laughs> Thank you. I have a question. <clears throat> what do we have a list of, and maybe, maybe the question is not for you, but do we have a list of all of the um, improvements um, for the centers, the two centers in question, all of the capital improvements? Is there a, a list? Sure, there are electrical, mechanical improvements, driveway repavements, paint and flooring, um, other miscellaneous finishes, including furniture and updating kitchens um, uh, for uh, Hasselbring. And Brennan Center, um, one second here. Now, is there an itemized list as far as um, for example, electrical, how much is it gonna cost? For, for the parking lot, how much is it gonna cost? So we, we again, we have estimates from October of uh, 21. So certainly okay. those estimates have, those numbers have changed uh, since then. Um, but ba you know, based on that, I can. Did we, did we get an um, a email of this? Can you send a fresh email out to us as far as those um, improvements? Certainly, I do want to make sure for the record that uh, the Brennan repairs are uh, roof repairs, electrical, mechanical, and plumbing, uh, updates to the fire alarm system, flooring, and again, other miscellaneous floors, flooring and finishes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that's everyone for the first round. On to the second round. Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, what I'm seeing is a pattern. I'm seeing the administration continue to bring resolutions for the spending in the ARPA funds. Eight million here, 450,000 last week, 300,000 this week. Just bringing it piecemeal, millions of dollars. And I've reached a conclusion. I'm looking at the makeup of this council. And ain't nobody going to stop me in a meeting or in the community from talking about the makeup and the philosophy of this council. I know this is a nonpartisan body, but I know of the Republican affiliations. I'm a Democrat. I think differently from some folks. And in my opinion, along with Mr. Murphy and some Republican philosophy, they done took over in Flint. I ain't down with it. I looked at that FBI going to Trump's Mar-a-Lago. And now I'm looking at what's happening here. 
I look at what happened to Liz Cheney. My position is firm, and I don't bite my tongue in politics. This body, in my opinion, has been corrupted. Point of order. What's your point of order? Um, Councilman Mays continue to make allegations and uh, assumptions of um, us, in his opinion, of his alleged us being whatever that he think he want to accuse us of. And we on a motion to talk about approving. Point of information. What's your point? Through you to, the, to Mr. Murphy. You don't know folks on this council set on the Genesee County Republican Party. You didn't know that? Um, OK. Um, can you finish your listen, point of order he, so that he can we, go back we to on a, We on motion 220347 provide what is funding. Your, what, what, what's your, no, what's he your is, point of order? He is not germane to the subject. Okay. And he keep on calling us out and nothing is happening. He need to get a warning and after that he need to be gone. Okay, well, you know, attorney, um, I just spoke with attorney Cups. Attorney Cups stated basically he's up to interpret. He didn't call a specific name. He didn't say Councilman Murphy is corrupt. He did not state that. I can but please don't. Councilman Mays, you have the floor. Madam it's Chair. Your, it's your second round. His thin can stay thin as long as he like, and it can get under his skin. But what I'm talking about is factual. I'm not up here making allegations of different philosophical opinions in this um, UAW town that I grew up in and known. I watched the makeup of the council. It's factual that folks sitting here sits on the Genesee County Republican Party fast as much as I know. It's true. I know of the affiliations and the philosophical differences of folks, and I got the right to talk about it when I see a voting pattern. I see a voting pattern. I see folks turning down projects. Now, this is 300000 in capital improvement money with ARPA funds. We've got capital improvement money in our regular fund. And this, and this council keep buying into this administration, bringing millions of dollars before this council opera funds. The same council who talked about setting up a structure before they start spending money. The same council who won't reduce motions to writing when the rules dictated by law. The same council who passed a resolution to do all things necessary, which includes holding a public hearing before you remove an elected officer. It's just corrupt. From this council all the way down to the mayor's office. And Attorney Kim. I don't forget, Attorney Kim was getting votes and meeting with a quorum outside of a meeting on April the 11th. It's all recorded. The same votes that he wanted to elect him, and they was, Attorney point Kim, so you sure you're right? What's your point of order? He is not germane to the motion on this floor, and we are being held hostage because he is not being stopped. Councilman Murphy, he has the right to use his time. He That's is not, Mr. Madam Murphy's Chair. opinion. Excuse me. He has, a, he, has, he has a right to, are you asking for a point of information or? I appeal the ruling of the chair. I said, are you asking, what, I haven't given a ruling. You, you ruled No, that no, you di I didn't finish. You interrupted, I didn't finish. I was talking to Councilman Murphy and you interrupted. I thought you were done. You no, just... I was not done. Okay, continue. And then I'll appeal your ruling. Point of order, Madam Chair. Excuse she me. way out of Excuse line. Me. Who is she, the new um, standard for how to run a meeting? Thank you. Uh, back to Councilman Murphy. You know, we, we are all adults here. We may not like, and some of the behavior is it, <laughs> questionable. But when we have something, if I'm conferring with the attorney, I have to take his legal opinion. 
That's his job. I, I, that's his job. But when we override and we want to rush to be heard, it doesn't serve any of us any good because then it adds on more time. There's already more time added with the points of information, points of order. But back to Councilman Murphy, you asked, you were stating that he was not germane. He gets to arrive, feed him a speech. Is there something you want to say? I'm, I was that, I was not, I'm doing my room, was that you, Councilwoman Lewis? I didn't say anything oh, yet. I didn't know whose mic was that. Yeah, it was my mic. I was just waiting for you to finish. So he gets to arrive at his point, which is on item number 220347, how he gets there without being disrespectful but personal attacks. He did not call anyone's specific name. He did not state that. So how he gets and he ties it in, he has freedom of speech. He has that. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, Council, was that your ruling? That, that is my ruling. I appeal the ruling of the chair. She appeals the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? A second. It has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Well, I'm going to say this. Thank you. We try to make it through a meeting. I am not going, the behavior, I think, it makes it difficult because we get into murky waters. I'm gonna allow him to speak, just like some of the things I don't understand, like some of the other, our other colleagues speak, and we get off on track because people have different ideas. And sometimes it may take a longer road to get to it, and some things may purposely be done to throw the council off. But one thing is we all work for the residents, and the residents don't wanna see us wasting time. They don't. We are still in committee. We've had so many points of orders. You can't even count anymore. I personally can't. So it becomes a banter for back and forth. No one's winning with the points of order, points of information. And it's almost easier to just let someone get to their point without insulting them respectfully. Each person represents the same equal amount of people in the city of Flint. Each person has a voice. It was questioned why I let him back in, because he represents a portion of the city of Flint. Did you have something to say, Councilwoman Lewis? Absolutely. Well, I'm not done, because, but I think you're being rude, please. I'm not done. Out of order. You're out of order, thank you. So when we talk about each point person. Point of order. I'm, I'm doing my, I, I, what's point your, of order. what is your point of order? That was very disrespectful, and that was not Utilizing proper decorum when you ask me a question, I didn't and know. I and I answered. Okay, you, you I asked me a question. Me. I didn't know. Very excuse improper. Okay, excuse Thank me. Thank you, Madam was, Chair. And then let me correct you on that, please, because you made a sound. That's the second time you've done that tonight through your mask. I can't tell if you're talking with your mask on. Your mic was just on within the last ten minutes, and I asked you when we were in the second round, were you saying something? I did not know you were saying something. You made a gesture, he had made a remark, and you did a remark. It was point like, of mm, information. What is your point of information? I will not just say anything without permission because that's, that's against council rules. Okay, well, thank you. Well, and let me correct you because you did. You did prior when you made a remark. He was talking and you made a remark through your mask. Point of information. What is your point of What did I say since I made a you remark said, through my mask? Well, you, your mic was on and I asked you, so let me refresh your memory. And you said, mm, and your mic was on. Your mic was on. I asked you at that point, did you need to say something? I did. So I'm going to finish up with what I'm stating on the appeal. So when we talk about how this is another point of how we waste time. This is another point of how we waste time with three or four point of information. I could have been done by now. So when we talk about this and wasting time, obviously we're all contributing to it. We're all contributing to it. And so if we want to move on, we, we all have to do better. I don't agree with Councilman Mays, not all the time, not at all. And Councilman Mays really will push the button, but Councilman Murphy pushes the button too and they both become very hot-headed. 
both of them. I have timed them before when one is taken. They were two minutes apart. One spoke for 23 minutes, the other one spoke for 25 minutes, and it was during a special order. And then they both said to me, they didn't want me to speak, which I took it, hey, if we're getting our questions our, and, and answers out. But let's just be respectful. So back Madam to, Chair. to your uh, ruling on the Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, Ms. Worthen appealed the decision of the Chair. Mr. Murphy seconded it. While you were discussing, Ms. Lewis got in a debate with you. I haven't seen the patterns of this council. Mr. Murphy can be proud to team up with Ms. Worthing, and Ms. Worthing can be proud to team up with Mr. Murphy. I just want the public to see it, because my work won't be done in the middle of this council. I done sat on councils with Kate Fields, Maurice Davis, and a bunch more of them. Now, as we discussing this, he, I guess, trying to get Miss Priestley on his side. I ain't looking for folks on my side. I'm looking for folks to do right versus wrong. Right gonna win over wrong every time. Every time. Just give it enough time. Miss Worthing is a handful. He proud to team up with her. She proud to team up with him. This guy been raising hat, as far as I'm concerned, ever since he sat here in November. Ms. Worthen been raising hat before he got here. Ms. Herkin wrote up whatever her ambitions is, then helped him raise hat and seem like 80 to 90 percent of the time, Ms. Lewis is voting with what Mr. Murphy say, coupled with Eva Worthen. So they glad to have five votes, however they put them together. I wouldn't be proud if I was them. My job ain't gonna be done here on this council. I done looked at the vote pattern from November to now, I done looked at it. Worthing, Lewis, Murphy, Hurricane Roder, Priestley, and Piper. I done looked at it. My work won't be done inside these chambers. I'm going outside of these chambers because it's a mess got to be cleaned up. Flint don't deserve to be headed in this direction. Whittigan is a problem. Mr. Edwards in that administration and Mr. Neely is a problem. Attorney Kim is a problem. There's no way you can be the sitting attorney having staff meetings with Mr. Whittigan and Mr. Neely and you releasing and filing in the wrong place on this council certain members of this council. You just can't fathom it. It ain't real for you to believe that Mr. Neely, Whittigan, and Attorney Kim them ain't trying to mess with members of this council. When you believe that ain't true, I'll sell you the Mackinac Bridge for a dollar. Worthing, I guess she figures she in her heyday. And when Murphy teamed up with her, he proud. Herkin wrote it tickles her. And Lewis just constantly votes with Murphy. I'm going outside of these chambers. I'm looking at the politics of the city of Flint. I wouldn't care if it took Weaver to clean it up, Mays to clean it up, and a lot of people to clean it up. This corruption, I'm bowing to do my best to clean it up. From the council to the administration. I'm tired of Murphy and that mess. I'm tired of Eva Worthing and her mess. And I want to cut Hurricane Road off. Her and the rest of them before they figured they done took over this city. Headed in the wrong direction. 
So I'll go outside of these chambers, and I'm going to holler out to the certain people who seem to have sense in this city. It's time to take it back over. It's time to shut some folks down. And I'm going to spend my time doing it. Madam Chair, you ain't got to worry about me coming up here trying to utilize the rules to put motions in writing. You ain't got to worry about me and the rest of this meeting trying to get things done right for the citizens of the city of Flint. Because when people blatantly break the law, the rules is the law. When people flip people off in this administration, we Madam got a Chair, major problem, and I'll wrap Councilman up by May. saying this. I'm going outside of these chambers, outside of these walls, and I'm going to do everything I can to clean this city up. Y'all have a good night. We're going to work. Madam Chair. It's, it's, You know, it's like middle school behavior, and it's enabling when, you, when one person is controlling the conversation to say, we are all responsible for this mess. That's an enabler. That's untrue. I'm not responsible for this mess. I know people try to blame me for it, but it was quite clear when the new council came in, there is one person that's responsible for the mess. And I hope this council will not allow enablers of Eric Mays to continue to allow him to take up our city time. It has been four and a half hours in your finance committee, Ms. Burns, four and a half hours. Point of information for, for you, Councilwoman Worthing. Um, I do, real, I, do you know that I do realize the time, but we had things that we had to cover. And most often, you aren't here. <laughs> You know what? You just added to the attacks, Ms. Burns. I'm here. You weren't here the other day. I was here. Point of information. Did, uh, and uh, I'd appreciate Mitchell, it, Ms. Burns, if you allow me to speak. Excuse me, hold on. I need to talk to Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, please make sure watch your decorum, please. You cannot tell people that you want to take them to the parking lot. You can't do that. No. No, we, I don't want to issue, I don't want to issue you a warning, so please, thank you. It's that rhetoric that you just repeated um, from Mr. Mays. People actually believe that I don't come to meetings. I'm here. And in fact, Mr. Mays himself might as well not come. He abstains from so many votes. He, his ward is way under represented. I can guarantee you I voted more than Mr. Mays since our term began. So there's people around me that are absent, and I don't do that rhetoric, oh, you're not here, Ms. Burns, when you were absent. I didn't do that when Pfeiffer was absent. Do you feel good about yourself, Ms. Burns? I'm going to answer that question. I was absent once. Okay, and I well, went to a funeral. It's more than once. I went to a funeral. And I think it's unprofessional and, uh, for you to, to do this. Council, what point of information? If we, no, no. Freedom you, of you, speech, Ms. Burns. Freedom of speech. Excuse me, I did a point of information. That means we all stopped talking. Now, I wasn't here. You made in reference to me. I would like for us to move on. I, I really would like would. for my time so, to be reclaimed. Well, I'd like to speak. To, just a second. She stopped the clock, so you have not lost any of your time, Councilwoman Worthing. Janelle is very diligent, but making sure she does stop the clock. So go ahead and finish. I'm just going to call out the hypocrisy. It's freedom of speech when Mays is telling Allie she's a Republican as an insult, and then uh, he calls her a dog, or he tells me to jump off the Mackinac Bridge. Uh, that's all freedom of speech. But if someone says, you missed a meeting, Ms. Burns, you are interrupting that person and you're upset. How hypocritical is that? Do you want me to answer that question? No. Well, Here you, you are, you are you still interrupting me. You pose the question. Can't even get, can't even get through you it. You pose the question. Thank you for your, you are proving my point. No, you're proving my point. <laughs> 
you're proving my point because you cannot be a victim here. And you're being a victim. You can't. You are the victim, Miss Burns. No. You're, you're always right. the victim. Point no, of order. That would be you. That point would of be order. You. What is your point of order? Point of order is Miss Worthing has the floor. Thank you. And excuse me, she asked the question. And no. I was answering her question. <laughs> point point her of question information. With how. Point of information. What is your point Did of you information? Did you know I asked the question too before I what, was called what, rude? What is your, what is, I answered your question. I, I, I didn't. What happened what was question you asked you me ask? a question and I answered your question earlier. No, excuse me, excuse me. What question, I answered your question when I told you about your mask. I answered that. Point of information. What's your point do of you information? remember that you said, do you have something to say, Ms. Lewis? Ms. Lewis answered your question and we with had the our, guest, and, we and had then our, you called me rude and out of order. Um, Ms. Lewis, that has nothing to do with what the conversation it is now. Does because, it does. Excuse me, I have the floor and I'm talking. You did your point of order. You're, you're out of order. Please continue. Madam Chair, will I be allowed to speak yes, without interruption? Go ahead. It's pettiness. It is hypocrisy. It is playing favorites when you allow a person to speak for two hours in a special order, most of the time wasn't even germane. And Mr. Murphy gets interrupted with constant point of inter orders and points of information by Mr. Mays because Mr. Mays simply hates Quincy Ver Murphy. And it's not right. And something needs to be done. A proper chair would not allow that to happen. And no, not everyone else does it. We have got to stop this. We can't do five hour meetings. I mean, I guess if that's what you all want to do, but I don't. And I for sure know that our city staff doesn't. And I for sure know we don't want to pay overtime for all these meetings for our staff. This council, uh, I, I would like to know actually a referral of how much we pay for overtime for all of these meetings. Because let's let the taxpayers see the amount of dollars that that we spend for meetings that last to one to two AM. I think that's a valid point and might stop some of this abuse. It's five hours in one committee. This is inexcusable. And no, it, it's not everyone. Thank you. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Priestley. And this is why people don't want to do business with the council or with the city. Totally, totally, totally wasted time tonight. Totally. And the residents don't want this. We don't want it. Our staff doesn't want it. It does nothing but cost us money. How many times have I heard from businesses who've approached me and said, we don't want to come to the city because that means we have to come to council and we have to listen to this. We need to get control of our business and do the business of the work. Dr. Lewis has a very important discussion item on the agenda of one of our committees. Privately owned blighted homes, what can we do? Once again, it's gonna be pushed off. I have hundreds of them in my ward. And we won't be able to discuss it because we wasted five hours on this crap. I'm done. No, you, I'm ready, you ready? Okay. No, hold on, because Councilwoman Lewis, I think, did she want to go before Councilman Murphy? Oh, no, I was just adjusting my microphone this time, so don't, I got it. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Thank you. You have the floor. So, so here's the deal. <clears throat> we all was elected whether we like each other or not. Um, Councilman Mays, whether he like me or not, I'm on here. The Lord blessed me to be here. That's something he has to deal with and go in his own private closet and do whatever. We got millions of dollars that done came into the city of Flint. Whether we like each other or not, we still have to respect one another. We may not necessarily agree. What I be trying to do <clears throat> is 
when I come into city council meeting, I'm looking at the agenda. When we make a motion, I'm thinking we discussing the agenda. <clears throat> My colleague go from talking about the agenda to making accusations against either me or my colleague or the administration, regardless of whoever, and they don't be germane to the business at hand. Me knowing that I gotta be at work at 11 o'clock, when I come in here, I, I be really wanting to get the business done because we got government ops, legislative, and I wanna try to get as much as I can before I have to leave out of here because I know it's very important that I get the business done when I get here to city council. Um, to I hear him make all of these different accusations against me or my colleagues, whether it's me, whether it's you, or it's anybody else, it's hard for me to sit here and take it. I'm not one of them that allow people to talk to me any kind of way, and I always said it from the day that I got elected that I was going to teach him how to treat me because what he was doing was setting the tone how he was going to treat us and you wouldn't go treat and talk to me any kind of way so when he get out of box and get to moving in different direction it just i have to as a person anybody who know me no quincy don't allow people to talk to me any kind of way the way he talked to me that wouldn't happen if we was on the streets i have to conduct myself in a decent manner when I'm here to the best of my ability. And sometimes it don't always go well. I done got put out by you and probably might get put out a couple of more times because I would not allow no one to talk to me or I don't even like my colleagues to be treated any kind of way. And I'm not understanding why we can't just come in here and get the business done and not be talked to any kind of way because we don't vote his way or we don't agree with him. I have never in my life seen somebody dominate the meeting as much as he done dominated to me. We started at 5.05. I got up and left and took care of some business with the administration. And this man was talking for over an hour and something. And you brought up me talking for 27 or 23 meetings. If you go back and research your tape, see how much he talked every meeting, how long. We all go agree to that one. <laughs> It don't make no sense because it's nine of us on city council and we shouldn't have to be in here and listen to him meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting go and antagonize and attack people because they don't agree with him or they don't vote his way and he want to threaten to recall somebody or do whatever he wants to. Do whatever you feel. But while we're here, why don't you respect us. And as the chairperson, all I'm asking you to do is take leadership and when he's out of pocket, just pull him. This this what I'd do if I was a chair. Let me give you some examples. If you was out of order, I'd give you a first warning, a second warning, and I'd put you out. Regardless whether it's Quincy or anybody else. That's what needs to happen to him. When he out of order, you out of order. That's your first warning. And then move him out and get on. When he not here, we get work done. And I will not, and I, and I know some of my colleagues may not agree, I ain't letting nobody talk to me no any kind of way, on no day, on no level, because I'm not going to talk to nobody any kind of way. But if he wants to, I, I could go there, but that's not what I got elected to do. I got so much work to do. We got so much work to do. We got so much work to do on these agendas. Why can't we come in here and get the work done and not allow one person to come in here and dominate us and talk to us any kind of way? And I am not changing. I am not letting nobody talk to me no any kind of way. And if don't nobody else stop it, I'm going to point an order or point an information and put them in their place. Because I, I did not get this far by letting people talk to me any kind of way. And if y'all want to chair a meeting and y'all want to be the finance chair or government arts or legislative committee, when this man get out of order, check him. And we won't be going through this. Thank you, Councilman Murphy. Is anyone else? Would you like to speak? Dr. Lewis. Thank you. You know, I'm not even mad at, at Council, um, Councilman Mays. You know what? Because he's been very consistent. He does what he does and he says what he says. But I have an issue 
when the person that is presiding as the chair continues to let him be out of pocket. See, we know who he is, but we're still trying to figure out who you are. Because Councilwoman Burns, you straddled the fence. And let me just go ahead and just make this really clear. For one, you allowed Councilperson Mays to come back. And your quote was, you did it so the voice of the first ward would not be silenced. Well, you didn't give one care about the second ward when I got put out and I got asked not to come back. You voted yes, put her out. Point and of information. Furthermore, Point of information. Um, I spoke up for you, so you're, you're quoting incorrectly. Um, at, Did as, you know I spoke up for you during that as, time? So as that is not as true. Spoken, she That's voted. Not true. Uh, excuse no. me. According to the records, you voted I for me to get put out of the Point meeting of that evening. Point of information, and so did the other colleagues. That's fine, but we're talking about you. No, you speak about all of them. No, 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 I'm speaking, speaking about, about you, me. so thank you. No, they all did. Um, I don't need to be interrupted. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, as I was saying, and then you tried to silence the voice of the Ninth Ward when Herkenroder was chairing and Eva went to the restroom, and then you asked her when Eva returned, you going to let her come back? That's that pettiness that we refer to, that we speak about. So if you're going to let Councilman Mays return to the meeting, you need to have that same grace and that same attitude when you're Point dealing with other colleagues. I do, and I have had Councilwoman Worthing leave before. I and have I, the floor. And, 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 I have and I the said, floor. Point of Was it a point of order? I said, did you not hear me? Point of information. I have also allowed Councilwoman Worthing, who has left the floor without asking, to come back. I have. So this let me is, correct you. This, this isn't a back and forth. Um, this is what you have done, and I have witnessed. Point of information. So I need, do you understand? I need you to please state what I did correctly. I did allow Councilman Worthing to come back also. But Again, that's not what order. I'm talking about. Go ahead. The chair is using points of information incorrectly. You cannot interrupt members that you don't agree with. It's, that's not how it works. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Worthing. But if she knew how to chair, we wouldn't be sitting in this spot. Going back to the initial deal where we were saying when I got uh, called rude. Excuse me. Um, that's a personal attack. I mean, it's your first warning. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. That, that is no. freedom of speech. No. That, that, that's, that's your first warning. Speech. I'll take the warning. It's fine. As long as you take the criticism since we're talking about what's going on. And then Eva posed, when I was called rude, Eva posed a rhetorical question that you felt that you had to answer. But when you asked me directly, do you have something to say, Councilperson Lewis, I said, yes, you called me rude. That was very disrespectful because that's exactly what you did. Listen, you can't talk about respect when you are the epitome of disrespect. And it's rude talk, the way that you speak to colleagues as well as administration. You know, girl, bye. Yeah, that needs to be applied directly to you. Because Point those of information. Were the yes. Do you realize you did this to Chris Del Maroney and dismissed him? So first take heed to what you have done on, on, in no, May. No, Listen, I will state what I've done. I sure will. But guess what? Stop trying to deflect what we're I'm talking not, about. Of we're talking about your point of information. I, I, excuse me. You have to cease talking. Excuse me. Point, when I say point of information, you I have can't to cease understand. Talking. I can't understand what you're saying. Okay. You know what? That I was don't. your second warning. Oh, I don't real the ruling of the chair. Me, I second me. that. It has been properly second. Mocking is against the rules. It has been. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a there's a appeal to the uh, to the ruling of the chair, and it has been seconded by Councilwoman Worthing. And I'm going to speak first. For someone who wants the rules, you cannot mock people, and you mocked. You know the rules so diligently. Dislike me if you may, and I'm completely fine with that. But when you're stating things that are not factual. Councilwoman Worthing has left before, and I have let her back in. You're not Point of information. What is your point of information? Do you know, I'm talking about the instance when Councilwoman Herkenroder was chairing, and you specifically asked Councilwoman Herkenroder, was mm -hmm. she going to allow Eva Worthing to come back to the meeting? Did you know that? Again, I'm going to finish. Um, 
mocking is against the rules. So when you speak of someone breaking the rules, you are a rule breaker yourself when you're mocking. You, you can't mock. And then you want to be, I guess, is the victim. And I want to also be clear. When you were dismissed and you did break rule 27.2, I spoke up for you. You actually had dialogue back and forth. So when that occurred, I did speak up for you. There's a lot of different things I may not agree with you when you were disrespectful to Chris Del Maroney when he was in the sixth ward, when you wouldn't stop looking at your phone. Point of order. You were dismissive to point of order. your point of order. You've taken the floor. Um, <laughs> this isn't a back and forth. This, appeal, this is an appeal. We're on an appeal. I speak first. Who has the floor right now then? I do. Thank you. And point of information. What's your point of information? My point of information is, according to Rule 27.2, during any portion of the meeting, council members may not engage in any kind of argumentative discourse with members of the audience at any time for any reason. I was not argumentative with Mr. Del Maroney at all. And furthermore... Point of information. Listen, listen. you're point taking the order. floor. You're taking the floor. No, no, I had the floor. I had, excuse point, me. Point of order. Um, I just called the point, point of, of order. order first. Can I, can, I think my mic is on. I said point Your of order. mic is on. She does have a point of order first. Go um, ahead. I'm going to be leaving this meeting. I, I can't see us moving forward. Yeah. So thank you guys. Have a good night. I'm leaving as well. Thank you. Thank you. We do not have a quorum this meeting. It is approximately 10 o'clock p.m. Finance Committee has been adjourned.